Democrats rally planned for Wednesday and give dialogue a chance in a statement. Council Chairperson Stephen Shaboy expressed regret that the Rilo Dinga led coalition has opted for protest well knowing it was unable to control goons and criminal elements from taking advantage of the peaceful protest. Police Friday fired tear gas in the capital Nairobi, targeting Odinga's convoy and took similar steps against demonstrations in the cities of Mombasa and Kisumu. Two people were shot dead in Kisumu and another in Megori, while over a hundred were arrested and are due in court today. This is interior. CS Keturek indicates told police not to interfere with Kenyans who assemble for purposes of either picketing or demonstrating so long as they do so peacefully. Speaking in Tarakaniti during a security barraza with residents, the CS said police have no reason to confront protesters who are exercising their right to picket. Kama wanainchi awana silaha, wachani na wanainchi wa sebe mambo yao. Kama wajabeba silaha, hawaumizi mutu, hawavunji duka ya mutu, hali wacha wange mambo yao. Ikifika jioni wataina nyumbani. Ikiweza kana uwasindikishwe. Yeah, yes. Sababu, kuna wenzetu katika idara ya usalama wachache, pia bao wanatumia nguvu visivyo. Na hiyo haita kubalika. Haita kubalika. And CIA leaders have warned President William Root against disregarding the ongoing collection of signatures from citizens expressing dissatisfaction with his government. The leaders led by CIA Governor James Orengo and National Assembly Minority Leader Opio Andai said the constitution was clear that citizens were sovereign and could bring about change in Kenya through parliamentary and extra parliamentary processes. Orengo challenged President William Root and his deputy to wake up and face reality, adding that the signature collection that began last week will result in their removal from office. Collecting signatures is just the beginning. He is just the beginning. He's not seen the real thing is coming. And I'm saying this without a fear of contradiction. Kenya is not a monarchy. Kenya is a republic. So we can decide through extra parliamentary means, through extra constitutional means to bring about change in Kenya. And we have done it before. When parliament proved to be acting contrary to the wishes of the people, we said we are going to the people. And right now we have reached a situation where we must go back to the people because the people are sovereign and they are going to bring about change in Kenya. This is National Assembly Minority Leader and Gunja Legislator beyond that, he told Kenya Council leaders to stop interfering with the opposition's activities including signature gathering. At the same time, Wandai stated that President William Ruto owes the Nyanza region an apology for the shooting of some youth protesting on Shabasaba Day. He said it was not acceptable for law enforcement agencies to kill innocent civilians who are exercising their constitutional rights to pick it. And ruling party United Democratic Alliance has intensified its registration exercise targeting 15 million members by 2027. The party's Secretary General Cliffus Malala led officials in Garissa for a registration exercise to net more members. The Yellow Party is particularly targeting opposition strongholds where it had few votes in the August 2022 elections. Recently, Deputy President Rigad Gishagwa announced the party's plans to hold grassroots elections as part of the measures to strengthen it. He said the party aims to open offices in all corners of the country so as to have a base in all the 47 counties. And Anglican Church of Kenya Provost at the All Saints Cathedral Reverend Samyam Wainaida bid farewell to the church after serving for 13 years during the installation of his successor Reverend Canon Evan Tomolo. Wainaida thanked the church for according him the support he needed to be the personality he is today. Wainaida will now be moving to London, UK to take up the role of advisor on Anglican Communion Affairs for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. During his tenure at the All Saints, Wainaina had carved a name for himself as a fearless church leader who spoke truth to power, and Reverend Canon Molo was installed as the 14th Provost of All Saints Cathedral Nairobi Anglican Church of Kenya Archbishop Jackson Olisa Pete presided over the ceremony. Now, the incoming Provost was ordained in August 2004 and has served in various cathedrals before he was called to the head of the Directorate of Mission at the SEK head office, a role he played from 2011 to 2016. This is News I'm Dennis Aceto. Good morning. One oh two point five Spice FM Kisumu.
The following takes place from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday on Spice FM. You tune into Kenya's biggest conversation. My name is Ramanya. Hey, Amanda. <laughs> hey, Amanda. <laughs> so, one hour is over? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It gets over Can you imagine in 20 minutes. What the big boys have also done. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> When you understand about partnership in politics, it's like the way marriage is these days. When you're looking for a wife, you're like, oh, you know, maybe you can help me pay for fees as I pay for the rent. Or you should you have a lioness living in your bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you a story. I went for a prayer meeting, yeah. which was called for the spouses yes. of candidates yes. for senators and governors. Mm. And when I got to the gate, the lady who was at the second, she refused to, she telling me, no, no, no. Leo tunataka wa mama. Leo ni wa mama. I'm telling her, no, no, no. She said, no. Siyo siku yenu. And I thought, there's a problem here, you know, because if it was a man, I would, but this was a lady. It will be called First Ladies until you change the name. <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you very much, Eric, and it's good to be at the Situation Room. Always a pleasure coming here. This is the most challenging uh, interview panel in Kenya. You guys are very well informed, and as you can see, Charles, today, very philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> to be poor in this country is the greatest sin you can commit, not just from a legal perspective, but from life generally. Yeah. It, it, it is very, very skewed. We've just had, you know, on the floor of Parliament, just most recently, a leader within the ODM saying that Sisi Ngombe is a baba. Yeah. Which means that you are willing to be milked dry. Hapo. <laughs> 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 you cannot force me to believe. I will give away. If it's a land that I'm told to return to you, I will. Okay? Because the court has said so. But I will continue saying, Oh, what to Russia? That's all that I'm doing. <laughs> the Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. Good morning and welcome to Monday. How are you doing today and what does it look like where you have started to venture out into? On the thicker superhighway, it doesn't look like much is happening, at least not for now. Um, a little bit of traffic as you get towards the Pangani at the underpass. Jogo Road is also starting to build up as you get towards the junction of Landis. And we'll see some movement on Gong Road this morning as you're trying to get towards the city stadium, or rather the city mortuary roundabout. Langata Road looks pretty good. It's free and clear, at least for now. You'll get through and through without too much of an issue. Outer, outer Ring is just a tad busy. A little bit of traffic as you're coming in towards the city. Um, and then also out towards the thicker superhighway. Are you coming in from Westlands? You'll be all right. The northern bypass has some traffic as it normally does, but this is all going to open up in no time. All right, let's see what Monday turns out to be. It looks like we've started off in just great stead. Let's keep it so and talk on Spice of MKE on Twitter. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. The Good morning at nine minutes after six o'clock and welcome to Monday. How are you doing today? Coming off the weekend where many things were happening. People were running, running, running away. Trials for the World Athletic Championships were happening all over the world. Kenya, the United States, <clears throat> South Africa, everywhere, everywhere. People were doing their thing and we've run into Monday. How are you doing today? Sisi go sasawa. Mm. Una fikiri sisi go ache. Did you go to Nyayo Stadium on Saturday, Sunday? On Saturday morning, mm. yes. And let me tell you, eh. if the trials, like you said, actually, 
if the trials are anything to go by, it is going to be blistering in Budapest next month. Kabisa. I wanted to go yesterday and see how it was going to end up mm. to see a lot of the finals. Unfortunately, I just saw some of the heats yeah. and then I had to leave. But Budapest is going to be thrilling. And then I was able to watch on TV yesterday. What was the turnout like at Nia Stadium? On Saturday morning, not so good. Mm. Yesterday, I hear the turnout was... Uh, um, much more impressive in terms mm. of people coming coming out to watch. Was the stadium full? If the stadium is not full, then everything else is that. Yesterday the stadium was full. Mm. Yesterday Sunday, significantly different from Saturday. Were they charging? No. Did they tell people they're not charging? Well, I don't. Unfortunately, th this is the, I think one of the things that we're talking about. The communication not the really. Only people clear. who turned up are those who knew. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't know, you were not gonna. Should they not have spoken of this at great length? It should be so that the whole country knew. It should be. This is also an opportunity for Athletics Kenya to raise money, and not even just Athletics Kenya, even sports stadium management vendors Many raise things. money, make this thing a big event. Mm -hmm. Just charge yes. whatever a hundred mm -hmm. bob, even if fifty, 50 bob, shillings. People 50. will be there. Fifty shillings. And the stadium management will not have some money to do. The now stadium needs some work. Exactly. Toilets are blah. It's terrible. Mm. You would have vendors. You can imagine how many people would come out yes. on a day where... How much business a, there'd be. Yeah, you mean full stops existing a long time ago. Yeah. You would have so many things going on. Now, let me tell you, because then I watched the American trials on TV. Uh. And it was like the Olympics. How? The stadium. Full, full like this there was a lot of action going on as far as they're concerned they've already finished their championships because they did the business can you imagine <laughs> yeah we are talking about 100 meters 400 meters you know where the places 3000 steeple chase yep uh, for men and women 1500 5000 10000 the marathon this my friend yeah. yep yep it was an opportunity ababunya mamba is the minister for sports Ababu Nyamamba? The reason this why is something that he should know next time, please. People went to stop. watch the safari rally because the he, hype, the hype around it, yes. And people went. And did you see the kind of sponsorship that it attracted? Yes, all those companies, Kenya Airways, the banks, the safari com, everybody, everybody wanted to put their money around the safari rally. Now, imagine Kenya's athletics trials mm. for the championship. global championships. Soon after, a Kenyan has broken world record twice, mm. two uh, world records, two weeks after, as in we, seven days. As we watch, mm. Mm. imagine how much this could have just. This is just, just unbelievable. Anyway, City. Yes. So Undu had an interesting weekend. She watched the athletics a little bit and she watched more on TV. And you, how was yours? Uh, can I say that mine was fine? <laughs> That's good enough. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mine was actually fine. Mm. I can see you changing your glasses. So the first one that you've removed and put away is for what? No, no. The one that I'm about to put on mm. is the one for reading. Okay. This okay. other one was. This other one is for seeing me. No, this one is for everything. You can see, you can read, you can do everything with it. Mm -hmm. But I have discovered that I have these glasses and I never use them. All right. Okay. Yes, it's not that this one is not seeing. Is this one sees yeah. sees quite well actually? So when this, these other ones are for reading, these ones are specifically for reading. So you won't see us. No, I, I, see, I know where you are. I don't have to see it. <laughs> General direction. <laughs> you were here. So it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing is when you don't, you're not certain. Me, yeah, I'm certain. I know exactly you where know you exactly are. You know exactly where we are. Yes. Uh, now, the problem is, when our guests start arriving, <laughs> will you be knowing exactly, you know, for example, Martha Karua is coming at eight. Mm. Okay. Now, you may tell her, you know, Martha in your nice blue dress, and she's not in a blue she's dress. In red and gold. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to mention dresses, okay. so that, so that oh, we, we, we can okay. be safe. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, you, so Eric? Martha Karua comes at eight. How are you? Me, I'm fine. You're fine. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. after she after comes us. at eight a.m. Uh, after the Sabasaba story, Azimio leadership launched a signature drive. Where are they taking the signatures? What is the what's the end game for signature drive? See, to get, uh, they said 10 million. Mm. So to get 10 million. <laughs> and, then? and then? That's what we're going to wait to see what they're going to do with it. Okay. 
Understandably, usually, mm. if I am to understand what signatures are for, mm. they are to authenticate mm. a certain mm, threshold that one has reached mm. from which there you can launch to do other things. And these are the things I'm not certain about. Okay. Yes. I'm not sure whether this is how you go and impeach a president. Mm. I'm not sure this is how you go and impeach uh, the Speaker of the Assembly. Uh, You're not sure where assembly. these signatures are taken. Yeah, I'm not is sure whether it's the deputy. I'm not sure. Okay. What the signatures do? Well, Martha Karua is senior counsel. She's a legal mind. She's an experienced jurist. She understands this constitution very well. She'll be here at eight. She'll tell us. So, what exactly do you want to do with the signatures? Eight a.m. Keep it here for that. At seven, we'll be having uh, Dismas Mukua, who's a political risk analyst, to come here as we have a conversation about the Kenya Kwanza promises. Tracking the Kenya Kwanzaa promises, very many promises that were made. There are some that they're saying, see, we are fulfilling the promise. As you can see, we are fulfilling the promise. So this was will be here and we'll be just looking at uh, what has been fulfilled so far mm. and where are we going to next. At 9 a.m., you saw what happened on uh, Saturday. Was it Saturday? Or was it Friday? When uh, CJ Emeritus Professor William Mutunga mm. went and did some shopping, Kumruwa Mayai, Mandas, Mukati, Maziwa. Maziwa. Mm. It was just Maziwa. Mm. It was mainly Maziwa na Mkati. I saw yeah. Maziwa Mkati. Okay. Maybe there were other things, but that's what I saw Maziwa mm. Mkati. And he was uh, taking to those people who had been detained on, mm. during the Saba Saba protests at the Central Police Station. And uh, Mkati wali, uh, na Maziwa aliacha. Lakini ya juu ali nani alibaki na ayo. You too. <laughs> it's not a laughing matter. <laughs> Sorry. Hajui nani alibaki na Mkati? na maziwa mwenye alikuwa na lakini hakutoka nayo sentro mwenye alifa kula hiyo mkati na kukunywa hiyo maziwa atujui kama atujui Boniface Mwangi who is an active citizen was uh, accompanying the CJ Emeritus he'll be here at 9 a.m. and he'll tell us the place of police in citizen demonstrations because that's the message that the CJ Emeritus was passing yeah. police have a role yes but their role is only limited to this according to the constitution higher so those are the conversations for today upon bias senior are you upon bias so let's get straight into weather we are live streaming the show edna are we edna how was your weekend she says it was fine she said can't you see <laughs> she's glowing <laughs> i mean <laughs> what are the what again well edna says she had a wonderful weekend she did didn't she <laughs> she's glowing <laughs> mm. weekends are good <laughs> weekends are good for edna <laughs> live stream is up are you online let us know where you're tuned in from and will tell us about the weather shortly this is the situation room the only way to start your day. At 13 in Nairobi, highs of 24 and lows of 11. Clear at 13 in Nakuru, highs of 26. We'll see highs of 24 in a clear Nyeri at 11. It's 10 degrees and cloudy in E in Eldoret, highs of 23. Looking into a cloudy Mombasa, we'll see highs of 29 and lows of 22. It's cloudy as well in Malindi, going to highs of 28. It'll come down to lows of 23. Mostly clear conditions at 18 in Kisumu, highs of 28 and 27 will be the high. In a clear Kakamega at 16. Kampala is clear at 17. We'll see highs of 27 and at 22, partly cloudy Dar es Salaam, we'll see highs of 31 and lows of 21. It's freezing in Johannesburg at minus 2. It's clear, however, it'll go to highs of just 9 and come back to lows of minus 2. Lagos is cloudy at 25, highs of 30 and we'll see highs of 31 in a mostly clear Kinshasa at 21. Looking into f Monday afternoon, Beijing is sunny at 35, highs of 39 and lows of 26, while Paris at 18 is cloudy cloudy highs of 30 and london will see highs of 23 currently at 15 sunday night is cloudy at 23 in new york coming into monday we'll see highs of 27 and lows of 21 Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 
94.4 Spice 20, 20. FM Nairobi. Oh, 2020. Mm. <laughs> 2020. Okay. <laughs> good morning, good people. Keza says good morning. Julia Serongo says good morning from Embu and ready to be spiced. Well, Karibu sana. Hello, all. I know. Spiced, huh? mm. <laughs> 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 okay. Deep State, who he chooses to call himself, is saying something about Eric cannot wait to give us Muranga and Roy Catholic pastor stories. Ah. Uh, what evil? Be, be preparing yourself. Mm. Okay. James Wangi says, Good morning. Another day for a beautiful conversation. Wonderful work. Asante Sana. Sophia Damari says, Good morning. Can't wait for today's conversations from Abu Dhabi. Can we exchange the weather, please? Hapa Joto at 46 degrees. What? Where, 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 where? 46. 46. And you said Johannesburg is? Minus 2. <laughs> Joburg is minus Joburg 2. Joburg is below freezing point. Yes, it's freezing. Literally. There's snow and stuff. Minus two. Yeah. You are saying minus. Well, even visa. when it's three, you don't know what to do. Well, with visa. Well, visa. visa. <laughs> <laughs> no, you imagine it's minus two. Last week it was ten degrees here in Nairobi. Where people were shouting. Minus One day two. it was ten degrees for about seventeen minutes. I looked. Now you can imagine. Uh, South Africa or Rhodesia visa. <laughs> <laughs> no, they actually have winters in that place. Man. They do. It snows. Mm. It they does. do. They do. And uh, anyway. Uh-huh. Good morning, Isaac Moai. He says he's tuned in. Salams Kutoka Doha in Qatar. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. Alex says, Alex Omogi from Doha. What were Doha? Wengi Edward, wengi. Mm, Good. Edward Gonze. I like that name. Where is it from? Listening to this great show Gonze, from the UK. Gonze, I know is a Kamba. Uh-huh. Is it N-G-O or N-G- G-O? N-G-O-N-Z-E. N-Z-E. Gonze. Gonze. Mm. Hmm, I like it. Mashari and Jero tuned in this morning from Portland, Oregon. Ruth Karenge says she's tuned in from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Good morning, spicy team. Alfred Onyore from Lucky Summer. Eh, where are those? <laughs> uh-huh. uh, Paul Wajohe is tuned in from Stockport in the United Kingdom. Okay. Eh, okay. Now, Edna. There's a message. Yeah, for you. <laughs> Can you tell us if it's true? That kissy men like Mbarambamba are romantic. Edna. Edna, stop ignoring us like you didn't hear what we said. <laughs> Can you confirm Can it? Can you confirm or deny that kissy men are romantic? Of course they are. Kissy men like Mbarambamba. <laughs> Of course she can. They're Tune romantic. In, they're romantic. Mm. Organa Jr. is mm. tuning in from Nairobi and from Los Angeles in California. Jacob says good morning. Totti Bishop, top of the morning team, Woodnam. What is that, Titi? Woodnam. The son of the lake. Oh. Nam Lolwe. Mm, Nam Lake Lolwe, yes. Mm. That's the name of Lake Victoria. Really. Ah, voila. Yes. Charles Kimani says he's tuning in from Seattle and tuning in from Dalat Nandi County is Elias Busene. <laughs> Innocent Akunda says, good morning. Royro Eco Locked. Good morning, team. Too bad for CJ Emeritus. Why too bad? JP is tuning from Maryland. And Ben says, good morning from New Jersey. Many, many people online this morning. Karibu Nisan, thanks for joining us. We see you all. Karibu, Karibu, Karibu. Kaiser Obed, our friend, is uh, also tuned in. He says, good morning to you all. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Including Edna. Including Edna. In fact, starting with Edna. <laughs> Mukisi. He says kissy men are romantic. Oh, he says they are. Oh, yes. Why would he be the one to tell us? Is he kissy? Yeah, of course. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Kiam Tugu says good morning as well. Uh-huh. Johanna y- Wagenye says good morning, people. Emmanuel Wamirere. Count me in. You are counted, man. And uh, Mopei says good morning. Tune in from Kajiado. Everybody. Karibu sana. Hiya, City. Mm-hmm. Where to this week? Sudan. Sudan, which one? Si Sudan. Mm-mm. Good question. Before mm. 2011, it was the biggest country on the continent. Mm. Mm. Then mm. came secession, and it is no longer the biggest country. But the interesting thing about Sudan is the history. The history. The beautiful history. Did you know that Sudan, Mm. as in northern Sudan, this is not southern Sudan I'm talking about, northern Sudan, Mm. has more pyramids than Egypt? Is that so? The comms guys of Egypt were working. (laughs) (laughs) The comms guys of Egypt were working. There are more pyramids in Sudan than in Egypt. Yes. Wow. Are they bigger than the ones in Egypt? No, the ones in Egypt Mm -hmm. are actually 118. 
But the number. ones we know, the three big ones in the Giza Plateau, the yeah. really monumental, really huge, huge ones. Huge ones. Yeah. Uh-huh. But Sudan has more. Now, did you also know that... How big are they? Like ant hills, am I proper... <laughs> proper monuments, like in Egypt. Yeah, Ngong Hills. Oh, wow. That big. Well, that's not bad. No, that's small. You know, Ngong Hills is just like a small plateau that rises kido kido. Yeah. Look, yeah mm-hmm. When I say Ngong Hills, mm. as opposed to Mount Elgon, as opposed to Mount Kenya. Okay. Okay, that's the as opposed to. Okay. As opposed to Kilimanjaro. Okay. All right? So the Sudan ones are Ngong Hills. Sudan well, one you have the Giza ones. They're not even Ngong Hills. They're, 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 the Giza they're, ones they're are probably Yata Plateau. The Giza know? ones are Kili. Yeah. Yes, All right. The, the, those ones are now. Mm. But I think it's interesting, though, that culturally, that they actually did then build pyramids. Uh, they did. You see, part of what we know as Sudan in ancient times was what you call Southern Egypt. Indeed it was. It fa- was. It was Pharaoh land. It mm. was Pharaoh land. Okay. It was fa- part of it of Pharaoh, Pharaoh land. In fact, that land that was Pharaoh land was known as the Kingdom of Kush. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Fabled the as Kushites. Bi- <coughs> ah, yeah, right. now you see. Yeah. Yes. Now you talk of Kushites. If you get biblical, you see this Kush we speak of is with a K. Yes. Mm. When you go biblically, it's with a with C, C. Okay. Mm. And then from this came this gentleman called Nimrod, mm. who was supposed to have uh, been the guy who sort of I brought into being Babylon. Yeah. Mm. See, it's an interesting history. Very. Very interesting. We'll be talking about more and more about this history. But the thing that caught my attention is the turmoil that now Sudan is in. Mm-hmm. Did you know that this is the fourth civil strife? That Sudan has had since it gained independence. Yeah. Fourth. When did it gain independence? 56. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's when it declared, mm-hmm. right? And that Sudan has always been ruled by a junta. Call it a revolutionary council, revolutionary presidential council. And when you Google search, like well, that one, eh? yes. when you Google search the presidency, you get what amounts to a tribunal of five people. That's the presidency. Mm. Okay? But it has been continuous. You would find you have a revolution, as it is called, and within the revolution, two years down the line, there's a coup. It isn't the first time it has happened. happened. Sudan has had very few years of what you may call prolonged peace. Mm. Yes. But the military has been in and out of leadership since the time when it got to independence. Mm. People forget that there were were two presidents who were known. There was Nimeri, known for a long time, and then there was who? The other one. Okay, what is his name again? Al-Bashir. Thank you very much. Mm. He was also a military man. People just forget that. Mm. Because I think he stopped donning his military gab and was civilian. This conflict seems to be the hallmark of this very beautiful country that boasts some of the most wonderful things that this planet can offer. Very mm. true. It's called UNESCO Heritage Sites. Sites. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It has them. And yet... This is what is going on right now. All right. <sighs> okay. Okay. Let's go to the proverb, shall we? Mm. Hot water is not a playground for frogs. Hot water is not a playground for frogs. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You can see the literal meaning, but oh. now <laughs> the meaning of this proverb What is it the Kushites are saying? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let me just explain something to you. Huh? Uh, When you look at these proverbs, there's one which encapsulates the idea of everything we're going to discuss. Mm. But it's also a proverb. Mm. And it's, When Allah made Sudan, he laughed. <laughs> so bear that in mind as we read the other proverbs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shall we look at the headlines quickly, quickly? Emma? No, uh, let's do okay. let's do traffic. All right, so. Quickly, quickly, quickly. So, mm. okay, it's coming up to half past six. Uh, let's take a look at the traffic and then we'll look, delve straight into the papers. <clears throat> Ah.
And just like that, traffic heavy on the Thicker Superhighway getting in towards the city via the Pangani underpass. There's movement also on Kiambu Road. Everywhere else doesn't seem to have quite woken up to Monday morning because it's slow coming out of Westlands in terms of you be able to get in and out without too much of an issue. Ignoring the traffic coming off on the Northern Bypass, you can get away with that today. Um, we're seeing a little bit of it seeping in towards the United Nations Avenue coming in from Kitisuru, Ruaka. Uh, but for now, you should be all right. Jogo Road has some traffic. Um, again, negligible. So it looks like Monday morning might take a minute before folks come round to the reality of the same. When that happens, we'll be here to spread the word. Let us know. Spice of MKE on Twitter and keep things moving this Monday. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM. Allah, a report by MP shows skewed composition of civil servants and a huge ethnic imbalance in employment with a few communities taking the bulk of the slots. In some government institutions, one community can occupy close to 40% of the positions. Gender rule is also foreign in the civil service. Okay. We'll look at that report. Body tears into Wandai over performance and says, <laughs> you're not doing your part, my friend. And uh, this is what you uh, ought to be doing. Uh -huh. yes, not joking. Shock. Are you ready for a shock? 3,000 schools do not have head teachers. The working party has been busy and the details of their reports are coming out into the open now. The findings of the Presidential Working Party on Education show that apart from head teachers missing, there is a huge deficit of teachers across the country. So even this 20,000 teachers that they want to hire in the coming you know, few days, weeks, months, whatever it may be, is not going to be enough. Just don't have enough. And this is not just uh, class teachers, subject teachers, this, this, that teacher mm. across board. It's a problem. Okay? Okay. A couple more headlines and we'll look at some of those other stories in the um, standard. On the front page of The Nation, highways of death. It continues to be a scary thing. Kenya's roads are deadly, taking lives at will mm. every day. Its users alive one moment and gone the next, while some are left with injuries that will scar them for life. From January 1st to July 5th, at least 2,318 people died on the roads. Mm. That's 12 lives per day. <clears throat> In a country where promises are made after every accident and no action follows, will we continue reading from the same script as innocent lives continue to be lost? There's an expose done by the nation. I don't know if it's an expose, more of an analysis of what's been happening with the country's black spots. We'll look into those details. There are eight black spots in the country. And on those black spots, there are several roads that make up these black spots. We'll look at that and look at what promises then are being made in terms of what is going to happen. Kalonzo is the man, wiper MPs tell Ryla. So, you know, get on that. Yeah. <laughs> the KNUT issues notice to TSC over salary talks. You see now, when they decided that they were going to hire 20,000 teachers, mm. the KNUT came out and said, excuse me, we had... And a CBA in place. In some way, it was non monetary. It was mm. non monetary CBA. Mm. And you people told us because there was no money, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Now you're hiring 20,000 teachers. Mm. <laughs> it's about time we had a conversation. Tuonge. Otherwise, <laughs> 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 okay, so we'll give you details of that on the back page of The Nation. Yes, mm. it was. Omala was in fine, Omanyala rather, was in fine form for the World Championships. He was. Uh, performing in the Diamond League, so it was not at Nyaya this weekend, of course. Um, but the Diamond League continues every weekend. Um, but he did a fantastic job um, in Monaco this weekend. World Championships, Team Kenya. He made it, of course, with his winning time. Um, so we see them. It was 400 meters, 800 meters, 5,000 meters, 1,500 meters, 10,000, 3,000 um, that were taking place this weekend for the women. Um, 800, 1,500, 5,000, 10,000, and the list goes on and on. But there was going to be a fine showing of Kenyan athletes in Budapest in August. But so we're at. I have the business daily. Mm -hmm. What do you call the Kenyan National Union of Teachers? Knut. And now you've just been calling it Kenyan UT. You just have a problem with the nut. Like saying nut. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Kenya National Union of Teachers. 
she doesn't like to say not <coughs> well in here like where that. investors made billions in the first 6 months of 2023 that is the headline of the business daily today So the story is basically saying the Business Daily has done an analysis of the different asset classes in the 6 months to June and shows returns from government bonds auctioned this year averaged 13.64% up from 12.83% in the corresponding period. So basically lending to the government is the most lucrative thing you can do with your money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> lending to the ga- government the government treasury bonds earned an average of 13.6% uh, percent. average one year treasury f- bill 11% if you compare that with fixed deposits of 7.6% uh, interest or land which will ac- accumulate 1.3% in terms of uh, value growth or you invest in the Nairobi Securities Exchange where you lose 16% <laughs> in oh the God. six months <laughs> <laughs> so the business daily is basically saying uh <laughs> The government has just become the only thing that people can invest in. Higher. Second story. Members of parliament have approved the establishment of the first virtual university in Kenya. The university, which will ride on the country's digital infrastructure, will charge between 10,400 and 10,900 per module depending on the course. The National Assembly last week approved the draft charter for the Open University of Kenya. opening the window for this admission of the new cohort of 7100 distance learners so it's basically based on the principle of affordability and in comparison with other open distance learning institutions it proposes that the fee payable by students for the identified programs should be between 104 and 109 per module this is according to the technical committee on the establishment of the open university of kenya that's what they told the parliament you get what i'm saying you understand city you're looking at me like <laughs> <laughs> ICT Are they saying this is the first time we've had an online university because that's what it is. Yeah, yes. that's what I was going to ask. So the first and then first of all what does it mean exactly? Recognized fully fledged virtual It's a fully fledged virtual okay. university. Not this thing of offering the classes that you offer online yeah. as well. Not that you offer online classes mm. and then somebody has got to come to campus for a and couple of hours for some modules. This is beginning to end virtual. virtual. Voila. Mm. Recognized by government, so, recognized by the Commission for University Education, therefore recognized also by the qualifications authority. Authority. Which means they have set it up from mm. scratch. This is new. Yes. I see. Yes. So it's a chartered university. Mm. Okay. So once now parliament has approved it, uh, it will offer two post diploma courses that's diploma in learning design and technology and a postgraduate diploma in leadership and accountability offered in the first year um, the open university of kenya will be based at the konza technopolis in machakos total number of modules taken by full time students will be between 4 and 6 modules president ruto appointed the presidential working group to deal with these things Uh, oh yeah so the story continues <laughs> hi let me tell you the ticker headlines before city you tell us what's on the business on, on the star and the east african kenya's plan to substitute palm oil import bill faces headwinds hey. a malaysian based edible oil dealer owning a manufacturing plant in kenya says inadequate land may slow down the country's plan for a large scale palm farming aimed at gradually substituting a 100 billion shilling annual import bill we have inadequate farmland for palms mm. okay uganda tanzania beat kenya to foreign direct investments ha you are so mitten you angry i surely <laughs> safaricom kcb shares among 1.2 billion shillings in unclaimed assets eh uh-huh. city okay a uh, top right hand corner mm. in till green collapsed this is a sad story mm-hmm. catholic priest dies in lodging after night out with girlfriend this is a story on okay. page 3 it's a story on page 3 yes you will read you tell us the story in yes. detail okay i'm just trying to figure out what part of the story is sad <laughs> sorry death death okay mm-hmm. mm. okay then we go further down mm. 
you can still deliver normally after birth surgery expert. Remember this story we talked after about? You can still deliver surgery ex- normally. Yes. Remember, there was you this story of the C-section. No- uh-huh. Yes. Okay. That oh, once someone has a we uh, C-section, then mm. always a C-section. Mm. Now, experts are saying that is not true. Oh. oh, right. The way they say if you had a C-section, all that's the it, subsequent births must you know, be now, okay. Yes, it, now it. it's like you're condemned to continue having C-sections. Okay. They're saying it is not true. This story okay. is on page two. Okay. okay. Bank on the spot mm. uh, over loss of 45 million in deal with agency. Mm. This has to do with the, uh, uh, com- the Information and Communication Technology Authority and the Family Bank and money that was unsecured loans lent to various startups and somehow something didn't quite work out mm. as though as as they had planned okay mm-hmm. and the auditor general has cast doubt uh, uh digital religious programs cash that this cash could be recovered okay mm. cash given out but recovery now mm. is in doubt let's call it limbo for purposes of conversation okay okay then governor of quality orders free health services for quality residents this story is on page 22. what does that mean Huh? The quality residents can now access health care with ease after Governor Fatuma Chani issued a directive to all public health facilities to offer free medical services to all. So How do huh? you know if I'm a resident of Kuala if I walk into hospital? Huh? How? Free. The and county what is, it, what is aiming a, free. What does medical services mean? You go to hospital. Then Everything. You, everybody that story. Yeah. And, and then yeah, go through it, Kidogo, and then you'll tell us. All right. Okay. The county is aiming at cushioning residents from huge hospital bills and improving general health amidst the rising costs of living and financial constraints. Mm. This full story is on page 22. And I'll read, I'll read just a little bit more so that you understand. All right. Mm. A Chinese residents will access free treatment in all public clinics and health centers across all 20 wards. No one should be asked for treatment fees in our health dispensaries. It has been catered for by the county, she said. The governor said that the offer is also extended to ambulance services, adding that the vehicle is normally fueled and serviced by the county government. She won't any official who may ask residents to pay for ambulance services in case of referrals and other health emergencies. Achana Achani said nobody should miss a treatment or die for lacking transport or medical fees. So what does that mean exactly? Are we talking about You said about dispensaries services? or all the way? Health facilities, all. Across all wards, sorry. all public clinics and health centers. I'm sorry if I'm acting a little dumb this morning. Okay, Just wait. Help me clinics here. and health centers. So you walk in, you get primary health centers are level one you get and level medication. Two. You get med- you get in, you get con- you see a doctor, you can get medication. Hmm. If you need to do a lab, whatever, you can get that for free on the bill of the county. And go home. And go mm. home. Yes. Oh, voila. It's on the house. How is she able to do this? She, she's just said. She, she's the governor. Mm. What do you mean, how can she do it? She's told you. <laughs> no, not now. how can she, like, how dare you, but, like, how is she able to do this? She's and saying that the county has put in money into this. She's already right? paid, the county's already paid for it. So, well, so the, the health... The worker that you'll find there is paid by the county. Yeah. The medicine that you find there has been bought, bought by, by the, the county. county. The, all the consumables in that the facility... V- the ambulances are fueled, by, fueled the county, by the county, serviced by the county. And the drivers we, paid by the, the county. county. Actually, why? why so why should you actually pay then anywhere? The county? Mm. Saying we've underwritten all this. Now, it raises a bigger question and you've raised it. Other counties do the same thing. Mm. Meaning, what do they charge? What's it based on? I'm not certain what they charge and what it is based on, but it is not free. The only other place where this freedom seems to be acquiring uh, momentum is Mombasa County. Mm. But we saw how the governor, Bolsonaro has gone about it. Because the <laughs> staff members who work in hospital facilities across the counties, it, this it meaning the health service, being a devolved function mm. paid by the county. Indeed. Again, this same county is given the monies they get, I believe, are mm. intended for also buying supplies, commodities for the hospitals. Correct? All right, correct. Yes. Now, ambulance belongs to county. <coughs> Fuel, they pay for. It's yours anyway. So, essentially, you're saying this package deal, which the county already underwrites, pays for, in essence, is free. So, the question that is being raised, so when people are charged, what are they charged for? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, where does the money go? What does the money go towards then? Because you would assume... It goes toward, like, you, 
replenishing Re- replenishing this and finance yeah. and refinancing this is that what they're saying that's what essentially because everything else that would be an adjunct service has been paid for salaries taken care of by the county fuel of vehicles already been t- being taken care of yeah. county pays directly to kemsa for example yeah. for medical for for medicine yeah but the question is where does the county get that money from is it part of the money that they given is it given? part of their that's equitable it. share money no or part of their own source revenue or own source what revenue. it is yeah but, but oh it could be that the money then that folks pay when they go to these facilities now counts for own source back. revenue as yeah, source. but what is it also does. not clear mm. when you say health center in medical terms it means it's a hospital yeah no 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 not, no, a, fully fledged, not a fully fledged it's, hospital it's a local dispensary hmm? So if we are just saying so you're encouraging primary health care basically that that's, is precisely that's what, what they're doing. seems to be implied here encouraging primary health. so instead of you going to you know the main hospital in go to the dispensary nearest to you go to the health Mzambweni. center nearest to you so don't go to Msambweni. no 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 go to your nearest health health center mm. go to Tiwi okay there's a health center you'll there find a health center okay. there you'll be you'll be sorted out and go back home mm. which yes. basically eases the pressure in the, the bigger hospitals, bigger hospitals. Mm. Mm. yeah because you have let's look for a chani we've yeah, been looking so. for a chani do i'll talk to please. Secretary. the secretary when you come back county to secretary come to nairobi a chani please come and let's talk about this it's an interesting one hiya yeah. uh what do you want to tell us about Ndu? let me tell you about education mm. Mm? yes please don't be annoyed so knut <laughs> mm. Okay, let's talk about the crisis at the school leadership. Okay. Shocking details have emerged of more than 3,000 public schools that do not have head teachers. New data also reveals counties with the biggest teacher shortage. Some 1,918 public primary schools do not have head teachers, while another 1,441 secondary schools do not have principals. Cumulatively, some 3,359 public primary and secondary schools do not have the much-needed institutional leadership at a time when the government is rolling out critical reforms in the education sector. Mm -hmm. It has also emerged that Kakamega County has the biggest teacher shortage nationally across its secondary schools. The county has 421 secondary schools with a teacher deficit of 4,283 teachers. Mm. The county that is supposed to have 9,999 teachers only has 5,716. Kisumu County, on the other hand, has the biggest primary school teacher deficit of 4,317 across its 608 institutions. The county that is supposed to have 10,547 teachers across its primary schools only has 6,230. These are some of the findings of the presidential working party on education reforms the biggest thing in this particular issue is the shortage of teachers mm. shortage of teachers so even that twenty thousand that they said they're hiring it will give kakamega it will give can drop Kisumu, in the ocean. and it will only have five thousand left we've not talked about the remaining 45 wow. counties rift valley has the highest number of um, <clears throat> nursery school teachers at thirteen thousand um 589 across 10,554 654 primary schools already there there's a deficit 3,000 okay we took 10,000 Kakamega needs 5,000 we've removed 5,000 Kisumu needs 5,000 remove 5,000 um Rift Valley the whole region needs edu- primary school teachers they need some 3,000 we only have 6,000 left of the teachers that they said they are going to hire it's a big problem here Okay, the report showed the leadership crisis in primary and secondary schools as a number of schools do not have heads. Schools in Kakamega, Kitui and Kisi lead in the number of institutions without head teachers. The question as to why they do not have is yet to be answered. An analysis of the task force data, task force data reveals that in Kakamega, there are 121 primary schools that lack a substantive head teacher out of the 89 895 schools. Mm. Kitui lacks 112, Kisi 110, Nakuru 88, Makweni 86, Bungoma 81, Bomet 77, Nandi 77, while Nyamira and Muranga tie with 69 institutions lacking a substantive head. So there's somebody who's just, where's Shikiliapa? That's what's really going on. But in terms of school leadership, Onge. You know, it's always been here, but it's catching up, and I hope, I hope the national leadership will take this seriously this time round. You know, when President Ruto says, I am the first president to actually say I am recruiting 140,000 teachers at a go within one calendar year. So 
I'm making moves. Okay, so with that, hope then you can do everything else and look at this education system properly. Because all these ills of the many 30 years or so are catching up with us now. Mm. When we stopped investing in education, stopped hiring teachers as we should be hiring teachers, stopped um, f- in focusing even with our teacher training institutions, this is it. When you say we have such a shortage of teachers, and yet there are teachers who have been trained, and yet there is. So what does that mean? You've just not been hiring the teachers. Mm. And we've been training them. Alongside and this we've been playing some games here. They have, alongside this demon, mm. has been this almost complete absence mm. of research processes within our universities. Now, you would assume that if you're talking about education and the importance that education has in our society, mm. that the institutions that where teachers are trained would be at the forefront mm. of research. Because all these things we're talking about, whether CBC is this, whether it is, whether it isn't, what we should do. Now, yes, all these task forces, working groups and what have you, mm. Are you saying that what these people are going around the country doing couldn't have been done by institutions whose mandate is actually, among other things, to conduct research? Because after all, it is them who train these teachers who go to these places. After all, it is them who understand these issues with curriculum development. The, the, the hit and miss that you speak of, it's like all these things are now congregating. Mm. And we then have this very, um, should we say, interesting situation that we find ourselves yeah. in. Mm. And everything that is being done is an attempt to catch up with all the years of neglect. Yep. But unfortunately, it's not... Look, I know that there's an, there, there is a good thing to be said about the attempt. Mm. But unfortunately, the whole is very big. If you don't treat it as serious as the whole is... Or at is, least just come up with a proper plan, plan and say... and follow so it. So we will start from this point, yeah. and this is how we shall address this problem. In five years, we will sort it. Mm. Or in ten years, we shall bring ourselves to this point and let nobody deviate from this plan. And you know the problem is that you have these gaping holes in the system, mm. right? If you want to talk about teacher shortage, if you want to talk about infrastructure challenges, you want to talk about all of those things. Now, over and above that, you still want to bring some fund- fundamental changes to how you deliver curriculum to what schools are going to be called us. The same working party is saying, scrap all of this, which I don't have a problem with, by the way. Decategorize schools. I don't mm. have an issue with that. But you're taking such major, major steps in changing your education system on the back of your basics having not been covered for decades. <laughs> so I agree. You know, before I used to think we're being a bit sensationalist using these words, crisis, problem. But it's true. Education in this country right now, it is a crisis. Big one. It is. And it's been here for a while. It's a big one. Let me take you to Nakuru. Mm. Two women. Gloria Kandie, woman number one. Anne Cherotich, woman number two. Okay? Mm-hmm. Two cows. Huh? Okay. Cow number one is called Lelgina. It is nine years old. Cow number two is called Ruma. It's eight years old. They are both of the freshian breed. Mm-hmm. Now, these two women are arguing over the ownership of these two cows. A court in Nakuru has ordered a woman to produce the death certificate of one of two Frisian cows at the center of a dispute between her and another woman. Sorry. <laughs> I have questions already. I will continue with the story. <laughs> okay. The two cows were subjected to a DNA test on August 28th, 2020, after Gloria Candie and Anne Cherotich claimed ownership. On Friday, Candie, who's been in possession of the two cows, informed senior resident magistrate Emmanuel Soita that Lelgina had unfortunately died. However, the magistrate took note that the cow's DNA saga trended in both mainstream and social media, and their ownership became a public interest case. He ruled that there was a need to prove that Lelgina died before the court could proceed with the case. <laughs> he inquired <laughs> if Kandie had reported <laughs> he inquired if Kandie had reported the death of the cow to the police. Sorry, okay. wait. <laughs> noting that the matter was sensitive. So umesema ngombe mekufa. Umeambia police. Apana. Ah, you should. Should you? So okay. Soita, the magistrate, ordered Kandie to produce the cow certificate of death within the next three weeks as proof that the cow had died. 
He adjourned the hearing of the case until the certificate is filed. Kandie, Cherotich, Eherda, Rongai Sub-County Veterinary Officer Peter Ngoge and the OCS <clears throat> are all lined up to testify. About this cow? About these two cows. The case filed by Kandie had been dismissed last year by Senior Principal Magistrate Charles Ndegwa, but she revived it. She sued Cherotich in 2020 when she was ordered to surrender the cow on September 22 at Baraka Police Patrol Base in Ngata, Rongai Sub-County. This was after the DNA test results concluded that Cherotich was the owner of the cow. How does the DNA confirm if you are the owner of a cow? <laughs> <laughs> That's what, <laughs> what are they testing against? <laughs> the DNA process involved checking, one, the dentition, two, tail switch, three, general body marks to determine their age. Oh, voila. Police failed to determine ownership physically and recorded the women's account of how the cows were dehorned, the skin patterns and dentition and compared them with the veterinary report. So the vet has done all those things. Mm. Then webe, describe your cow. Okay. Mambo yangu mongea iko mangalia chu, mongea mangalia chini, meno iko ya brown. All those things. Elizaliwa leni 20 2012. 2012. That is an eight-year-old cow. Mm. This cow here is nine. Nine. That's not your cow. Oh no, really? Uh, in the results, Ngoge said Cherotich's description of the cows matched the DNA test results. So Cherotich is the one who gave a story that matched what was on paper. Mm. However, Candia said she bought the cows from two people at a combined price of two hundred and fifteen thousand shillings and named them Ruma and Lelgina. She rubbished the, that DNA result, and that's why these this cows have been at the patrol base. The you know, cows are in the station. Uh -huh. Yes, exhibit. No, <laughs> so now they'll feed the cow milk. No, the, the patrol cow base, but now she was taking distress. them to go hunt. Nene. So now, yeah, well. Lelgina has died. Oh oh now she's no. coming to tell the magistrate. You know what? That Lelgina died. Magistrate is like, ah. uh, where is the dead body? Why is the death certificate? So, do you take a death certificate for an animal? <laughs> it's it's a learning process. Uh, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> she was told, go record this to the police. Let them confirm that that cow, the one that whose DNA had been taken, is dead. And give you a certificate to confirm that we are talking about the same cow. Can go and kill another cow and claim Lelgina. And say it's died. Lelgina. Yeah. And Lelgina is just there happily milking. Mm. Yeah, it's true. There's a headline I didn't mention. Please do. I think it's in all the papers. Eh? Mm. Ethnic disparity laid bare in rich state firms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is in the star. Mm. Ethnic imbalance in public service. I'll just read through it in a minute. Mm. Yes. A teacher service commission, dominant community at 17.17%. Mm. Kalenjin. Okay. Anti counterfeit authority, dominant uh, uh, community, Kikuyu, 18.10%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> National Social Security Fund, dominant community, Kalenjin, percentage, 18.26. Mm -hmm. Kenya Bureau of Standards, dominant community, Kikuyu, 18.47. Now, this is what I was laughing at. Kenya National Shipping Line, Luo, at 31.38. Come on. 31. Where were you? This is water. <laughs> you think it's funny? Just wait until I get to the next one. Uh -huh. Kenya, I uh, know, Pwani University, Mijikenda, 33.47. Mm -hmm. Kenya Maritime Authority, guess. Luo. Luo. Thank you very much. 15.97. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Now, this one, you may guess, but you may not get it right. Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. Marine and Fisheries Marine and Research, Research Institute. Uh, At 39.7%. It's not Luo. No, it's not. not. That's what he said. Eh? Uh -huh. So it's Bijikenda. Kisi. At the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Institute. Bulifanya. All right. And you, Communications Authority of Kenya, Kikuyu, Kalenjin. They share 19.43, 19.43. Uh -huh. They are square. Kenya Trade Network Agency, Kikuyu, mm. at 30%. Kenya Medical Research Institute, Kikuyu, at 25.8%. Kenya Generating, Kenya Generating <laughs> Electricity <laughs> Company. <laughs> Kenya Company Electricity Generating. Generating. <laughs> that one, Kikuyu, 31.73%. <laughs> 
Kenya National Highway Authority kikuyu at 24.16%. Okay, sawa. Where? 7 a.m. Spice up your life. Good morning this is Newsworm Dennis Aseto Kenyans will today know the fate of the Finance Act 2023 as the High Court will today give a ruling on the case that was filed by Busia Senator Kiob Tata and others challenging the implementation of the act. The government through Attorney General submitted a request for the decision to suspend the implementation of the act be lifted as the matter is being heard in the courts. Last week the court extended the suspension of the new tax laws to allow time to hear the matter. The government says that the delay in implementing the law will affect the government her budgetary plans. Otinda Molo, representing the petitioners, however, stated that the case does not in any way stop the collection of taxes by Kerry. They have compromised the entire budgetary legislative support system. This side shows by the, by the petitioners are intended to, to hide away the constitutional, political, and financial crisis. This fear mongering is misplaced. The Finance Act 2022 continues. Only the additional taxes are then suspended. That does not cripple government, does not stop payment of debt, does not stop the country from running. And the NGO Council of Kenya is calling on the Azimiel Omoja One Kenya Coalition leadership to suspend a protest rally planned for Wednesday and give dialogue a chance. In a statement, Council Chairperson Stephen Chaboy expressed regret that the Rilo Dingalet Coalition had opted for protest well knowing it was unable to control goons and criminal elements from taking advantage of peaceful protest. Police Friday fired tear gas in the capital Nairobi, targeting Odinga's convoy and took similar steps against demonstrations in the cities of Mombasa and Kisumu. These as interior CS Keturik indicates told police not to interfere with Kenyans who assemble for purposes of either picketing or demonstrating so long as they do so peacefully speaking in Taraka Nithi during a security baraza with residents. The CS said police have no reason to confront protesters who are exercising their right to picket or demonstrate. Kama wanainchi awana silaha, wachani na wanainchi wa sebe mambo yao. Kama wajabeba silaha, hawa umizi mtu, Wavunji duka ya mutu, wacha wangee mambo yao. Ikifika jioni wataina nyumbani. Ikiweza kana uwasidikishwe. Yeah, yes. Sababu, kuna wenzetu katika idara ya usalama wachache. Pia bao wanatumia nguvu visivyo. Na hiyo haita kubalika. Haita kubalika. NCI leaders have warned President William Ruto against disregarding the ongoing collection of signatures from citizens expressing dissatisfaction with his government. The leaders led by CIA Governor James Orengo and National Assembly Minority Leader Pion Dai said the constitution was clear that citizens were sovereign and could bring about change in Kenya through parliamentary or extra-parliamentary processes. Collecting signatures is just the beginning. He is just the beginning. He's not seen the real thing is coming. And I'm saying this without a fear of contradiction. Kenya is not a monarchy. Kenya is a republic. So we can decide through extra parliamentary means, through extra constitutional means to bring about change in Kenya. And UDA Secretary General Cleofus Malala has called for the arrest of Azimio leader Ayla Dinga for what he says is a treasonous offence. He says that the constitution is clear on the election of the president. Ati wanasema, ati wanaanza kukollect signatures, ati muandike signature, muondoe rais katika mamlaka. Sisi tumesema, Raila Odinga ni lazma eshimu katiba ya Kenya. Rais akisha chaguliwa na IBC, yeye ndiyo rais kutoka 2022 paka 2027 tungependa kuambia Raila Odinga hatutakubali wewe kupindua serikali na kupindua serikali that is a crime hata kufikiria kupindua serikali na tutahakikisha kama wewe unataka kupindua serikali wale watu ambao upindua serikali hao ukamatwa wanapelekwa kwenye prison so Raila Odinga you are not above the law 
on the selection of the IEBC added that the selection of IEBC commissioners had stalled due to the withdrawal of Azmio's team on the bipartisan talks. Yeye yeah, anasema kwamba ati anataka kukuwa na IEBC yake. Ati yeye atambui IEBC yetu. Sisi tunaambia Raila wacha kupoteza nafasi na wakati ya wakenya. Wakenya walisha amua. Na tunajua kwamba IEBC is an independent commission. Kwamba sisi tulikaa chini. Tukasema tuwe na bipartisan talks. Wakati tulileta wabunge wetu saba waonge. Na wenyu wakakuja kwenye meza. Wabunge wazimio walitoka tena wakakimbia wakarudi kufanya maandamano. This is Newswab Dennis Asada. Good morning. It's a few minutes after 7 o'clock and there's traffic that's built up quite heavy on the thicker superhighway. Coming through towards the CBD and touching on Moranga Road a little bit here and there. It's going to get heavier as we get closer to 8. We're into traffic hour early today. Kambu Road has also started to pack up and we're looking at traffic coming in through Muthaiga. The northern bypass is giving then uh, Ruaka and Limuru Road into those areas. It's heavy on Waiaki Way this morning as well. And just like that, James Gishuru has some traffic as you're getting out towards Westlands. All right, in the CBD, it's busy. You'll see some traffic now heavier so on Jogo Road as it comes out towards Landis and then towards the Kamkunji roundabout, very, very heavy. Look at that, Kangunda Road, Juja Road, Manyanja Road, heavy and everybody's touching on Outer Ring. Who else is touching on Outer Ring? North Airport Road as you're trying to get towards Mbakasi is gonna spill over to Outer Ring as well. So everywhere you look this morning, there's a little bit of traffic. Let's try and manage it as much as we can. Talk to us about what's going on in your neck of the woods on Spice of MKE on Twitter. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation seven hours, Room, room. the Welcome only way to, to start your day. Room. If you're just joining us by tuning in on KT and Home, Karibu Sana. We've been live on Spice FM and YouTube and Facebook since 6 a.m. And we're here until 10 a.m. Colgate is still doing the thing. And that is helping children smile by giving them access to potable water. What is potable water? Clean, safe, drinking water, healthy. It's not just water. <laughs> oh, so it's not water which moves from point A to point B. It is not portable. Not portable <laughs> like it is not carriage. Like, uh, like it, it has pot. So it's water in a pot. No. P U R T A B L E. The anglais. Yes. <laughs> now, you know what Colgate is doing? Colgate is basically saying walk into Naivas today, tomorrow, um, or the day after. Buy Colgate. Any tube of Colgate that you buy. Some money goes towards sinking some 30 water wells that they've identified several areas that have communities that have no access to clean, safe drinking water, and they're going to help them get that. So they'll sink the water well, they'll make it operational, and the children and the community around there will benefit. 150,000 people are going to benefit from this. All you need to do is think about smiling, think Colgate, buy Colgate. That's it. At Naivas. We have a guest in the studio. Dismas Mokua is a political risk analyst. And every time he says this, city is like, huh? Who's a political risk analyst? Mm. So just ask, it, <laughs> ask him again. Dismas. Yes. Explain to us what you mean by a political risk analyst. Because separately, the words have sense. Mm. Together, they make sense. It's me who, I'm the one who doesn't understand it. 
<laughs> Thanks a lot for the opportunity to explain it. Mm. You know, when uh, investors want to go and do business in any country, mm. they want to understand um, what are the political variables. Like, for instance, if somebody wants to, say, do business in uh, DRC today, mm. they want to understand who are the major candidates, are they who is likely to win, and if they win, what policies are they likely to drive? Are they going to be, say, you know, to use that uh, political jargon, on the right or on the left? Mm. And is it likely to impact their business? What is the economic uh, thinking? Are they likely to increase interest rates? What is their philosophy on employment or unemployment? So essentially it's giving uh, international investors information for control and decision making. Because the people would like to invest in a country, but before mm. they do so, they want to know who is likely, say, for the case of Kenya, who is likely to be the president. If it's uh, William Ruto, what is his economic policy? If it's Raila Odinga, what is his economic policy? And then uh, who is likely to control the National Assembly? Who is likely to control the Senate? If maybe it's somebody who wants to do business, say, oil business in Turukana. Mm. So they want to know right from the top who is likely to be the president, who is likely to be the two speakers, who is going to be the governor, who is going to control the local county assembly, so that if you're going to be in the mining business or in the oil business, then you, you've you got information for control and decision making, and you prepare that if uh, Mr. El Odinga becomes president, how do I navigate? If uh, William Ruto becomes the president, how do I navigate? So you do that kind of analysis, the first level. Then the second one is around... Um, social risks because again a majority of international business get it wrong mm. when they go into a market <clears throat> without uh, knowing the local consumers so maybe it's uh, an organization like mcdonald's they want to go and set up uh, no no maybe kfc mm. they want to go and set up uh, in uh, western kenya they're selling a particular kind of chicken. Mm. They need to establish whether or not well, the people, the like people there would like that kind of uh, chicken. Mm. And then people have got very different tests and uh, preferences. Even the way you do the adverts. And a good example would be then uh, in the mobile telephone, you had an organization called, uh, I don't know whether I'm breaking any rules, mm. but uh, when you look at the, the market penetration, a penetration strategy of uh, Safaricom and uh, Kensel. Mm. There is one brand which targeted uh, the elite. They yep. were doing air shows, yep. and then there's another one which targeted uh, Mamamboga. Mm. Now the one which targeted Mamamboga has grown to become an in international uh, company, and the other one uh, seems to be struggling. Per, so essentially, per that's what uh, political per analysis billing. is. Mm -hmm. Per second billing, per minute billing. Yes. And all those kind of strategies. Yeah, because I remember mm. then I used to work for <clears throat> for General Dean Corporate Communications mm. and we we're doing uh, the strategy for Safaricom. So instead of uh, sponsoring air shows at a Wilson Airport, we, we decided to come up with a strategy. We go put up uh, water dams, you know, boreholes, mm. giving people atlases, you know, going to machinani proper. Mm. So essentially that's what political risk analysis is. Okay. Does NIS know that you do this? Because <laughs> it sounds like you're doing their work. No, no I'm not doing their work. I'm, uh, it's simply giving uh, people market intelligence. Pre preparing dossiers and giving intelligence to... Uh, mm. Actually, that's what market research is all about. And, yeah. and, 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 and you're telling foreigners about Kenya. Huh? Yeah. Like, not only that, he's going to be president. <laughs> I think I've heard him say is that Mamamboga doesn't want to watch air shows. <laughs> well, well, you see that Mamamboga... Mm. Okay, if you can break it further, mm. then... Anybody who had capacity to go to Wilson Airport to go and watch the air show, in fact, had a mobile phone mm. and already had a number. So why are you already preaching to the converted. converted? Why can't you go to my village in Mosocho and tell people that I'm now there's something called a Safaricom and there's a per second billing, then there's per minute billing, and then I'm giving you and a you can mobile buy an, phone. an Alcatel phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, and in my view, if you are yeah. going to any market and you don't have that market intelligence... So it's about intelligence. That's good. Probability of a failure is extremely high. Very good. Very good. Actually, so, I even suspect that... So now we'll be looking at the dossier that you prepared ahead of last year's election and then looking at the latest dossier and comparing <laughs> whether you are right or wrong. City, mm -hmm. give us the day's proverb. This week's proverb? Uh, they have the country of Sudan. Mm -hmm. Northern Sudan, not Southern Sudan. Okay. okay. Hot Sudan of Burhan. Sudan okay. of Burhan, Sudan of civil strife. Sour. Rather, Sudan of continuous civil strife. Hot water is not a playground for frogs. Hot water is not a playground for frogs. Mm.
Uh huh. This must. <laughs> What's your interpretation of this one? I mean, I would say that before you go to any environment, you must understand uh, the obtaining, uh, I mean, the key actors. Because if you fly blindly, then you're likely to get into trouble. Mm. That is my basic understanding. And you know, the beauty with Proverbs is you're never right or wrong. So it depends on your interpretation. Mm. Mm. But sometimes it can decide your <coughs> own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the people who write these proverbs also provide us with their interpretations of it. Huh? Mm. So that's why we don't ask you to figure out what the writer meant. We ask you to tell us what you think it mm. means. In that way, you cannot be wrong. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so for me, I think that uh, my, my basic understanding is that uh, if you're going to get into any situation, you must be prepared for it mm. so that you manage your risk. Yeah. Hot water is not a playground for frogs. No. Mm. Yeah, if you're a frog, you better recognize that this is hot water. Mm. Yeah. But Although, again, there's a saying that uh, if you want to kill a frog, you use hot water, but you increase the temperatures uh, gradually. So it never notices. So, yeah, so it will not notice that uh, it's actually temp- there's a change in temperature. Mm. Yeah, this proverb begins with that change temperature. It's already hot. Mm. So if it were to get hotter, then it would be much hotter. Mm. So, yes. All oh, right. So, Dismas, um, what's happening in the country politically right now is a lot of conversations, right? So, we have started a new financial year. There is a new budget in place. There are new tax revenue raising measures in place. People are complaining about those measures. Um, the cost of living is still high. You know, cost of food has not come down. Yes, we have experienced some rainfall of some sort. There has been distribution of some fertilizer in some areas. There is expectation of a harvest coming, but things have not changed all right from your barometer where are we politically if you compare where we are now just political discourse versus six months ago at the beginning of the year versus four months prior with the beginning of a new administration well maybe to give it first a global context i think uh, the entire world everybody seems to be nervous like for instance if you start from uh, <coughs> Israel, mm. people have been doing demonstrations now for 27 weeks uh, that are unhappy. A few days ago, there was a demonstration in uh, France. Uh, people are unhappy. Mm. So generally, the economic uh, variables are making uh, people unhappy. You've spoken about uh, food inflation, which affects uh, every single person in the world. You recall a few days ago, Ramaphosa, President Ramaphosa and company were in uh, Ukraine and Russia trying to get a, a grain strategy. And even Ramaphosa was accused mm. that you've gone to Ukraine instead of uh, sending your commiserations or condolences to the president, Umenda Kuliza Maindi, Ikuje Africa. So I think really there, there's been uh, that uh, discomfort. But coming to Kenya, when uh, President Ruto took office, a number of uh, people were extremely nervous because they were not very sure whether on which trajectory he was going to follow. And then when he appointed his uh, principal secretaries and cabinet secretaries, people started asking, does he have capacity and competence to address those, uh, I don't know whether it's an accurate saying, now two elephants in the room, mm. the food inflation and uh, the cost of fuel. Mm. And I think people gave him uh, the benefits of time to see how he's actually going to address it. And in my view, his administration has demonstrated that they actually understand uh, the problem. And uh, the biggest challenge you've had in uh, Africa is that... Uh, Everybody has got capacity to describe the problem, yeah. but very few have got capacity to offer the solution. And in my view, he's offered uh, a solution that uh, if given maybe another one year, then uh, people will begin to see the results. Another one year from today or from? Another one year from the beginning of this uh, financial period, mm. which maybe there's again issues uh, in court. Mm. But interesting is that uh, I've seen pictures of uh, President Ruto admiring uh, his uh, maize farm and uh, the same with the deputy president regarding Gashagwa. Mm. So maybe that is a sign that uh, we may be able to contain uh, food inflation in the next uh, few days. Okay, hang on a minute. So you've seen mm. pictures of them standing in front of a, maize, a, f- a field of maize. Yeah, and the maize looks very like green. Ad- right. So, mm. so how do you take that to mean that it is something that they would see that would be good for the country as opposed to their private or personal gain? 
You know, you know, in 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 the past. Uh, sorry, uh, and I asked that because pre mm. before that uh, mm. maze analogy, you talk of let's give them another year. What is it that they have done that would then fuel that thought that say, hey, these are signs that something could be good? And I think the rest of us would like to know what that is, so that we can also join in this hope. Well, you know now, maize is really what uh, or the majority of Kenyans uh, love as their step of food. Although, again, people claim that it's actually not, it doesn't have any nutritional value. Mm. But you know, we like still uh, eating ugali. So before President Ruto took over, there was subsidy, and we understand that it was being uh, offered on one side of the equation, on consumption side. But he said, for me, I'm going to focus on uh, the production, production side. Mm -hmm. So recently when they were launching the e-government services, they said uh, they've given a lot of fertilizers mm. and there's more land under cultivation mm. than they are growing maize. Mm. So the reason I was bringing in that the two leaders have been admiring the maize farms, so it seems to suggest that uh, in the next few weeks, we are going to have uh, a bumper harvest. So it's like they were sharing the photos symbolically. Yeah, my understanding is that... Mm. You know what, people? We talked about now at least there's a crop that's about to be harvested. And just going by, I have seen it, I've witnessed it myself in my own farm. So when I say that there is a crop, I know, I have a personal experience. Yeah, and they've indicated that there is more land under production. Right. So one would expect, obviously, that mm. uh, if there's going to be that sustained production, mm. then uh, there's going to be a lot more supply than demand. Then maybe the prices will start uh, coming down. Mm -hmm. And you remember that was really a key issue between the President uh, Ruto and Mr. Raylo Dinga. That why do we offer the subsidy? Is it on the consumption side or is it on uh, the production side? So that is the first level. And then the second level, there were reports by government agencies mm -hmm. that in fact Kenyan exports are growing in uh, Africa for the first time, and that they are saying that is uh, unprecedented. Also, in my view, that is uh, that is good news. But again, when we go back and say. When you're saying that maybe we are on the right uh, trajectory, mm. who is actually mm. defining that we are on the right trajectory? Is it State House saying that we are on the right trajectory? Is it uh, Kenya Kwanza or uh, is it Azimio? Or more important, is it uh, the, the, the so-called uh, ordinary Kenyan? Mm. How does it affect their, their pockets? And you know, majority of uh, Kenyans, if you call a spade a spade, number one, they suffer from uh, housing instability. Out of uh, 10 Kenyans you meet uh, today, when you get to the middle of uh, the month, as mm. you approach the end of the month, all of them will be scratching their heads, asking themselves, how will they pay their rent mm. or are they going to pay their mortgage? Mm. Because Kenya suffers from housing instability. And then number two, every single day, majority of Kenyans, when they wake up in the morning, a good number are not even sure whether they're going to have lunch or they're going to have uh, supper. So, they're trying to manage the situation because we are called Nanja. Mm. Then on the flip side, again, there's a small, and this is deliberate, a small minority of people are not going to have lunch or supper because, again, of uh, medical conditions. Mm. So in my view, the biggest, uh, I mean, the biggest challenge for the administration is to ensure that it address that food uh, inflation so that at least uh, we are food secure and then we can go to housing insecurity right. and then all these other things because nobody will function on an empty stomach. On food... There are several things that the government decided to do. So there was a medium and there was a short term. In the medium term, look at the harvest that comes in the second half of the year. And that's what we're expecting around September, right? Where they said, so let's subsidize fertilizer, give a cheaper fertilizer to the farmer, where the taxpayer has paid half of the price of that fertilizer that we've acquired. So it's not that uh, people who sold us fertilizer sold it to us at 3000 It is the taxpayer who's paid the other 3000 and then the farmer pays 3000 It's gone to the farmer. Rains come, plant, grow, nurture your crop, then we shall harvest. When we harvest, hopefully we shall have a bumper harvest. It'll be cheaper, it'll get into the market at a cheaper price. It'll set off price reduction. In the immediate term, let's import grain. Let's import maize. Let's import rice, right? And that was a conversation. So the CS for Agriculture opens the window for importation of maize. And by April, with a target of uh, 100 million bags of maize, by April, they're only at 10,000 bags of maize. With 10 million target, 10,000 is what they've done. So that thing was not working. 
Yeah, the minister gave an explanation and they May's said that, who was supposed to have had maize by this time, which would have at least helped to stabilize the price, that has not worked. Yeah, I recall Linturu giving an explanation mm. that they discovered that there's actually a maize uh, shortage or grain shortage uh, all over the world, and it was becoming very competitive. And if somebody wanted to buy the maize, you needed to do it uh, in bulk. Mm. So a number of uh, players were given uh, the licenses or the authority to bring it, but they did not have the financial muscle. And it still goes back to Ukraine. That uh, that is where we get most of our grains from. And one begins to wonder that uh, Africa today, with all the kind of land we have, why do we still have to rely on uh, grains uh, from uh, Ukraine? So that that is the explanation he gave. But you know, at the end of the day, Mura back in the village does not care about uh, Ukraine or whatever is happening. All they want to do is when they go to the Darajambili market or Mosocho yeah. markets, yeah. they're able to access maize so because they've given you mandates to run kenya to offer solutions they're not interested uh, in uh, details they just want to ensure that uh, there is uh, food on the table why are you satisfied with the explanation that was given by the cs for agriculture i was i was uh, satisfied because you see as i indicated earlier on this is what i do for a living mm. so i follow these uh, trajectories uh, so are you saying that there's nobody in the world who was able to buy means People are still able to buy maize. So why was, to why was Kenya not able to get the maize? I, I think the the people who were given uh, licenses probably thought it was going to be a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. But they discovered uh, managing those uh, supply chains was a uh, complicated So it was game. a strategy issue? It must have been uh, maybe a poor understanding of the markets. I'm the saying dynamics. this because mm -hmm. when I asked the president this question uh, during our interview, he said... What they had now decided to do is go directly to the millers and give millers their import license and tell them, you have been in this business. You understand your supply chain. Go to your supply chain, get maize, right? That tells you that the initial people that Medeka Linturi and the others had given the license are people who were just traders, not necessarily people who understand the maize supply chain. And that's why they go into a market and you find a disrupted market, then you're not able to play in this market because you don't play in the market anyway. You, you Which is why they were trying to shift it and telling now the millers to go because you millers, you understand where you get your maize from and your grain from, go there. Tells you there was a strategy problem. And, and uh, my understanding is there was a reluctance because these uh, millers said that uh, before we do business, can we, can you clear the, can we sort out? the other obligations? Mm -hmm. So they had uh, some sort of a strategic advantage. They said, we are ready to do this, but uh, let's clear that the obligations. And in maybe that is a very good lesson for anybody who wants uh, to do business. You don't just jump into any sector if you don't have the insider information or the market knowledge, which is not written anywhere, but which is gained through, you know, those strategic networks. But and this, uh, what the puzzles me. this is what really puzzles me. Are you telling me an entire minister with an entire ministry doesn't understand that there are services people like you can offer. So that by the time you're giving your 10 best friends these licenses to go and import maize, that this knowledge that they ought to have had, that there is a problem with maize in the world market, surely that ought to have been known. That this maize that is then available cost this, that ought to have been known. And not known on the day you go to the market. It's something you'd have known before because people like you can focus and say, we are not going to have a bumper harvest. City, yes. there are people like Dismas who are employed by government to, do just to actually that. do exactly that. Not only at the ministry, but if we, if we just take it into a global thing, the National Intelligence Service has people. And they look, food security is a national security issue. And they're experts in that within NIS. There are people who gather information such as this. Okay. <laughs> Actually, not just uh, NYS or even... Uh, no, 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 the, NIS. The, 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 NIS. Sorry, NIS. sorry, sorry. Yes. Yeah, NIS. Yeah. Mm. Yes. It's just about uh, the understanding it's the basics. market mm. and also wanting to come and uh, dismantle the cartels. And you know, it's a given fact. Mm. And you know, sometimes the word cartel is used in a negative way. But er every sector, mm. so before you break those uh, cartels... Why call them cartels? Why don't you call them players? Because the moment you say cartel, it doesn't matter what you do, it's negative. Okay, now they're insiders. Let's say they're industry insiders. The insiders are still negative. Okay, let's call them now stakeholders. Or, or partners yes. in uh, that business yes. who've got a very deep understanding. But in my view, maybe the long-term picture is that uh, 
have uh, as uh, Kenya Kwanza demonstrated uh, capacity and competence mm -hmm. to address these uh, food inflation capacity and competencies. They demonstrated it. No. I, I want to hear this. <laughs> no, I I, I I I'm saying that, I'm this. that's the question mm -hmm. that we should be asking ourselves whether or not they've demonstrated their capacity and competence yeah. to address uh, these uh, critical issues. Okay. Mm. So usually, um, um, if we just want to look at how a, a government will feed its country, to feed the nation, which is probably, or create a conducive environment around that, which, which, around, uh, that happening, the planning component cannot be ignored, right? So if what we are looking at right now is indicators of success that's currently happening, or indicators of future success, then we must also look at the plans that are in place today for that to happen. A major component of that planning looking at past behavior that will then inform future action. Now, if we are saying that departments exist where this planning should take place, that means they're doing forecasts, they're planning every day, we are seeing what the trends are. Because of this, this is the um, this is the backup that we have in case this should or should not happen. Do we know that those things are actually in place? Because if they are not, then unfortunately the indicators which we are saying we are seeing then actually are untrue. If there is no plan in place for some of these things, if there is no active working agenda mm. that will be followed, it is almost, in, in fact, you could say now that the future is bleak. My, but my experience with the, the Kenyan uh, public sector, mm. they've got uh, some of the brightest Kenyans working for the public service. Mm. If you go to the national treasury, those are economists are very solid. If you go to the Ministry of Agriculture, the people who work around the food security issues are very solid. Mm. But the challenge is, at some stage now, they become advisors. And you know, advisors suffer no risk at all. The decision makers. The decision makers are politicians. Mm. And sometimes uh, the political decisions are influ influenced by interests. And it was interesting that uh, Kamau Chung was published a bill on uh, conflict of interest, mm. which is an entirely different ballgame. So when countries succeed or failure, 90% of the time, it's not about uh, public servants. Because the public servants... I've got that capacity and they've got the competence. Mm, to do it's what about to do. the when you offer proposals to the people who've been elected, mm. they're the ones who take uh, the, the decisions. Yeah. And that's why those are the ones that we elect <laughs> to keep in office or uh, and, to and, remove and, from office. And, and you fire them. Uh, yeah. Now, let, let's let, take a break. We'll continue shortly. 28 minutes to 8. Kenya's biggest conversation is hosting Dismas Mokua. He's a political risk analyst. He's our guest this morning. We are tracking the promises of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration and checking is the current is the country headed in the right direction. Dismas, you know Showmax. You know Showmax, right? Yeah, from watching this station. Yeah. You know, I'm largely analog. Mm. I'm a village boy, so I'm not at home with this new technology. Mm. Of TV. My friend. <laughs> Edna has just been telling us here how men in Kisi, Kisi and Yamira are switched on. They are digital. And then you're coming and saying the men in Kisi are analog. The men, analog. Kisi are analog. The men are villagers. Did he say comes from Yamira? Huh? Comes from Mosocho. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in the minority. In so the minority. I, I, I stand anyway, to benefit. There's a beautiful show on, on uh, show marks. Indeed, there is. Picture this. A lady, her name is Esther. There's a bag. A child stumbles upon this bag and fiddles with the bag, opens it inside. Money. Ah. She says, wow, jackpot today. She goes to her four friends, her three friends, and says, look, man, found this money. What do we do? We are churchgoers. Do we take this money and say, church, here, yeah, I found this money? Or do we say, my future now is secure? So they're dealing with that moral dilemma. Now she finds out that this money are the proceeds of a crime in which her brother is involved in. And the kingpin of this supposed crime group wants to find out where his money went and who took it. Can you see now the drama that's already starting to unfold? It's a lot mm. of things. Many things happening at the same time, but mm. you want to know, don't you?
Yeah, the amount. I've got an incentive. Now, <laughs> it's Show Max's original <laughs> title. It's called Faithless. And it's another release that came out last week. Another episode unfolding this Thursday for you to find out exactly what is going on with Esther and her friends, Ruth, Hope, and Deborah, and her brother, Benja, and Kane, who wants to find out what's going on. Hey, showmax.com says get on it and find out what this story is about. A really interesting story unfolding every week. We'll this is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. The man who looks at a beautiful girl and doesn't talk to her will end up serving lunch at her wedding. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> City, mm. do like that. My father has killed a mouse. Will he fail to kill a man? I'm a wapanya. Small <laughs> mammal, <laughs> big mammal. Mtu <laughs> mshinda. What, what, what are they how are we comparison? I mean, you a mouse. What are they saying? What they're saying is, uh, my father has <laughs> killed a mouse. <laughs> Will he fail to kill a man? <laughs> <laughs> name, surprise. Someone's name. Surprise. The name surprised you? No, the name is surprise. <laughs> no, what am I saying? I'm from Nigeria, man. I met somebody <laughs> called I Believe. So See? Your name is I believe. Yes, my name is I believe. But that's the short form. I said, excuse me. I said yes. My no name problem. is I believe. So what's no, the full name? No, I believe in the goodness of the ah. <laughs> The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. It's 11 degrees. It's sunny in Nairobi this morning. Highs of 24 and lows of 11 today. Sunny at 13 in Nakuru. Highs of 26. 24 will be the high in a sunny Nyeri at 12. And looking into a sunny Eldoret at 13. Highs of 23. It's partly sunny at 22 in Mombasa. Highs of 29. And we'll see highs of 28. And the sun is up in Kakamega. What's happening in Kisumu? You guessed it. Sunny as well at 18. Highs of 28. And mostly sunny at 16 in Kakamega. Going to highs of 27. It's a sunny morning in Kampala at 18. Highs of 27. 31 will be the high in a partly sunny Dar es Salaam at 23. It's getting colder in Johannesburg. It's now minus 3. Highs of 8 today. Partly cloudy at 25 in Lagos. Highs of 30. And we'll see highs of 31 in a mostly clear Kinshasa at 20. Spice up your life. All right, a little bit crazier than it was about 30 minutes ago. We're looking at traffic then now in all parts of the city. has built up um, on Mombasa Road as you're getting out towards the Nyaya Stadium roundabout. You'll get onto Huru Highway and it's going to clog up a bit for you as you get to that Haile Selassie Junction. Jogo Road, absolute mess. It's very slow as you get towards Landis. Landis is packed up inbound. A little bit of outbound traffic, but, you know, manageable. On the thicker superhighway, that started a long time ago, way past the Outer Ring Junction. So now the Outer Ring Junction until the Pangani underpass is bumper to bumper traffic. Already from what we are seeing you can use the service lanes it'll take you you know a shorter time to get where you're going Kiambu Road busy as well and we're looking at traffic then coming off of Limuru Road and into the city CBD is where you see the most of it but uh, all this is manageable at least for now your bypass is looking good take advantage let's talk on Spice FMKE on Twitter are you ready okay. Spice FM Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. Ninety-four point heal in the studio city. Mm-hmm. You know the discussion around what the government knows and how it uses the knowledge it has through the various agencies it has actually deployed to do this work is a subject of interest in discussion for this very reason. We find ourselves in a situation and we say we have a government that is in charge of the nation. And we have to question what it is that they're doing with the knowledge they supposedly have to alleviate the situation that we keep seeing recurring. Now, when you keep hearing the head of the nation coming to tell you, you know, these prices are going to continue rising. Fuel is going to go up. He's probably telling us just simple facts. That is what is going to happen. But when you then tell us that we expect a bumper harvest, and you tell us we've also taken measures to ensure that through the National uh, uh, Kenya National Training Corporation to alleviate some of these problems we have with the supply of goods that we have in the country. Now, 
we are given to believe in the government until we observe that what they said isn't happening. Now, the test of, of the taste of this particular pudding is in the eating. And the eating is when they say, do we see it? Do we experience it? The story of a bumper harvest we have heard continuously. And that's precisely what we've heard. It is not the first time we're talking about bumper harvests vis-a-vis -vis importation of maize. Even when it comes to the cereals, it's not something that is new. Mm -hmm. We know our internal capacity for production and we know the shortfall. But why is it that every time this discussion is had, we have to keep being referred to Ukraine, to Russia? And why is it that we don't hear of concrete plans to remedy what we can locally. Because are we saying that we do not have the capacity to feed ourselves? Are we saying that the government cannot come up with a strategy that will ensure that we actually feed ourselves? As last you've indicated earlier on, uh, food security is a national security agenda. And there are no debates. I mean, there shouldn't be any debate about it. Uh, and also, the, all these experts have given uh, their proposals. But looking at what uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa administration uh, situation has been, they've indicated that uh, for the first time, there is a significant increase of uh, land under uh, maize uh, today. So, and I don't have the figures from the top of my head, but uh, it suggests that uh, there's going to be more maize harvested this uh, season than uh, in the past. And then, obviously, the clever folks are the Minister of uh, Planning, as well as agriculture, they will know the shortfall. And maybe we need to have that strategy of uh, buying from the global market when the prices are very low and we store it uh, somewhere in, in Kenya. You know, in uh, some countries like uh, Japan, Norway, the Nordic uh, countries, they actually have uh, food reserves for seven years. You told us this the last time. Yeah, there are food reserves for they seven have some years. Some mountain somewhere where. Yeah, there are food reserves for mountain. seven years. <laughs> <laughs> All these the critical things that are make a you know a state a state. They yeah. have reserves for seven years. Yeah. So I'm wondering in Kenya, oh, what amount of food do we have? Oh, you wondering with us, in, you? In, 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 okay. our, in our reserves, yeah. In because you see, I've got a valid, uh, I've got an issue of interest uh, in Kenya mm. to ask ourselves. But how much how food I actually do we have think, in reserves? I actually think this conversation about food reserves is all good and well. But when it comes to meeting the needs that we have on a daily basis, we've skewed this conversation. It's heading in the wrong direction. Because as you have more land producing huge amounts of maize, the subsistence farmer who ought to feed themselves, because when they feed themselves, they can feed others as well. So even when you're talking huge national issues at the national uh, level and uh, you're talking about national cereals board and what have you if the subsistence farmer the ordinary monenci as we call them is able to feed themselves across the country then this story of food shortage or the dire streets we find ourselves in will be will be enormously reduced because these subsistence farmers also tend to feed their relatives who are in town now I do not hear that conversation. The conversation I hear is for huge productions, massive productions. And yet, if you look at, let's forget Ukraine, let's look at our neighbor just across the fence and over a place called Uganda. Uganda. Yes. Or even Tanzania. Their subsistence farmer is able to feed themselves and their family. Feed. They may not have money. But they can eat on a daily basis. Now, we cannot eat on a daily basis. Now, you've hit the nail on the head by describing a basic concept in economics. That Kenya, we are largely consumers. We are not producers. And the reason why we are not producers, majority of us have moved into urban areas. Mm. And uh, the few people who are left uh, in the village, it's no longer in fashion for, say, a man my age, or even younger, to be engaged in farming. They think that you need Kazi Jolwed or Kazi Amukono. But again, in as much as you can have that uh, peasant farming, there's another concept that uh, we are missing out. Mm. We don't have a really serious, heavy commercial 
farming in Kenya. No, we don't. You know, you can produce for... You can we, produce, used, we used to at some point. Yeah, you can produce 10 bags uh, in uh, Mosocho to feed uh, your parents and uh, your cousins. But you see now you're producing for that small unit. You may not have uh, surplus. Excess, you know, you may not have surplus to take to the market. Which is, in my view, is a, a good reason why we need to have... Uh, now, this is strategic benchmarking to go to New Zealand or Australia. When people talk about... Uh, commercial farming, it's actually commercial farming. Or Heavy in, or commercial even, or, farming. Or even China. Mind-boggling quantities mm. that are produced. And now, City, let's go back to the basics. In Kenya, we do not produce toothpicks. So, we have to apply pressure on the Kenyan shilling to get toothpicks from uh, bamboo produced uh, in China. You mentioned uh, Uganda, because the entire of Uganda is 100% uh, Arab. Arab yeah. mm. As some said, we used to import uh, chicken, eggs, tomatoes, everything from uh, our neighbors. Did we stop? No, no I'm, I'm not talking about uh, that history. We okay. used to. Even the cost of eggs, uh, an egg in Uganda would be cheaper than uh, an egg in Kenya. And in my view, that is why the Kenya ones have said, let's now work on the farmer. Mm. Stop coming on uh, this side. And in my view, for us to make progress, we must really work hard on those uh, exports. Exports. So, uh, you know, some of the tax measures are very exciting. Mm. That are, instead of uh, Nduye buying a seat from uh, my brother's here on uh, Dagoretti Road, mm. she has to go to Italy to go and get a, a bed from uh, Italy mm -hmm. instead of uh, promoting our local folks here. Yeah. So, in my view, for us to make progress, we must work tirelessly on those exports. I don't know. These are just basics uh, in economics. We but don't even need to reinvent. Why do we work on exports when we can't feed ourselves? You know, this thing of exports, I get it if there's a need. Huh? But does it, is it not simpler to simply make sure people can eat before you start thinking of what to do with but, other places else sure, that you don't but, control? But isn't that just the basic yes. thing that has happened in every... And, and this, this was, mm -hmm. I mean, we have to look at it. Every country today that exports and is successful and is successful please know that that the only reason exports came about is because the business of the country within had been completed to a satisfactory level so when they said okay we fed ourselves and people are buying from within now how about we now start selling some of these things out there you will find that countries today who export successfully do not have an internal food problem no, that, that addresses my point that we must encourage uh, production that when we've now got a, a surplus, we can uh, export. And one of those things is uh, by making Kenya an FDI destination. Because mm. I bet if you get five commercial farmers from uh, New Zealand and five from uh, Brazil, and then we come, we give them uh, land. They con I mean, you can even give them some counties that are said to be, they're not, I mean, where you can have irrigation, mm. yeah. they can produce so much maize that will uh, suffocate us. Do you think, <laughs> I'm sorry, because, you know, I think sometimes we, we can romanticize this idea quite a lot. But for me, it essentially comes down to actually just getting stuff done, right? We've already talked about the fact that uh, there are experts within their own right, world-renowned individuals who sit in the planning departments of various government offices. They know what needs to be done. The uptake of the proposals that they make, the political goodwill to actually get things done, the desire to have something done for the entire population should supersede any kind of personal gain that can be got from these things should actually make people want to get rid of things like corruption and uh, what's that other word you like to use city impunity and the mediocrity should get, uh, should get rid of all of those things that is when you see these things happening because it is not for lack of expertise it is not for lack of resources kenya does have enough it is not does Kenya not have. Kenya does have enough. But for me, it is the person and the character and what they will actually do over the resources or the expertise that exist. So can we start having a conversation about, or can we continue the conversations which has begun in some quarters, about just getting things done? Now it's getting it done. Is it not? Now you're describing uh, the situation where Kenya Kwanzaa finds itself in. Uh, change management. Mm -hmm. That they need to change the way things are done in Kenya. So the first thing was around uh, that uh, subsidy for consumption. So let's work with the farmer. And Eric has indicated that uh, it's actually the taxpayer who is now financing uh, the 
production side not the consumption side yeah so the farmers especially from kitale they are both they keep on crying every single day that the biggest challenge is fertilizer we could put fertilizer we are cool now they have a fertilizer so we'll give them a couple of uh, weeks to find out whether they've made uh, progress now the, the, the maize may not be sufficient for us to sell but at least we'll say in the, this season maybe our capacity has grown by 20 30 percent whatever percentage is mm-hmm. then now we'll start having that uh we'll address the food inflation but in my view the most important thing is getting uh exports and how do you export is by getting the fdi and part of the challenge that uh in administration which comes to i mean engaging in change management is that you have uh, to upset the status quo and we are told that for you to make an omelet you have to break an egg so in the process of uh, breaking these eggs there are some people who may be nervous who are uh, unhappy with the new environment and then also kenya wants us to manage the citizens partners and stakeholders uh, expectations so that people know that while today i could be having a skuma wiki there's a high probability that if they ex- uh, they execute all these uh, programs and policies then tomorrow i'm going to have a, yeah. a paper stick yeah. simply for one reason that uh, the typical kenyan has no time for brewed tea or for brewed coffee i see you are enjoying a uh, brewed tea but people just want instant coffee instant tea because if you're running on an empty stomach you you cannot be say where a minute give us another six yeah but you see, give us another six weeks it's it's all about like you said it's all about managing expectations which if we critically analyze this it's two things that this administration the previous administration and maybe even the opposition administration falls short on communication all these things that we're talking about have actually been government programs you see we're talking about fertilizer subsidy fertilizer subsidy has gone to the farmers have you heard the government come out and say these are the number of farmers who have actually received like clear on a dashboard everybody knows county by when county. you talk about the extra number of acres that are under maize cultivation this time do you actually hear that as government communication directly saying these are the extra number of acres that are under maize and we're expecting maybe a harvest will go to this level you don't hear it well uh, uh, that also helps you to maintain that hope alive and keep the hope alive all those things that we're talking about you know going into the counties and encouraging farmers encouraging subsistence farming and also helping people to go back into those the county aggregation and uh, industrial parks are supposed to help with that because if you have those you're talking about value addition at the local level at local farm level you guys grow tomatoes in kimana loy tok tok how do we make sure that those tomatoes are not going to waste how do we reduce how post harvest losses we have the aggregation and industrial parks how what do we need we need chillers we need what the other day i had governor waigoro talking about you go to hospital and you uh have, you have a running stomach you're given what's that saline water called ort the ORT, right? It's imported, isn't it? We import, we import mm. saline water. Nimaj. We have water and we have salt. Water, <laughs> and we, we have import, sugar. And we have sugar. Right? Why can't we get these things done? If you listen to a government in various points, you'll hear all these things being said. You'll hear them being mentioned. I sometimes get a sense that they do not want to consolidate that message into one clear message because mm. they don't want us to keep track because there are some people somewhere in between want to play the game of making money out of it last week there were two page adverts some 25 counties have advertised for contractors to come and develop the county aggregation and integration parks ministry of trade had placed an advert in the paper it was here in the standard last week they don't talk about it openly publicly it because they don't want you to know that these things have started they don't want you to know about the tenders being issued <laughs> why it's all about just government managing expectations you, you listen to the president you can hear the president says talking about things and there are things that he thinks are moving you know we talk about they don't security, move and someone tells you that we have acquired 40 acres in zambia to grow maize now you tell me <laughs> no, no, I, I, how I, does I, that address when we have 500,000 acres right here in Kenya which is not fully utilized how does that even give you confidence yes. that we are actually going to have food yes i, I think the challenge uh, has been about uh, 
you don't know the strategic communication and uh, storytelling. Uh, Kenya Kwanza has attempted uh, to tell their story, but one forms the impression that uh, that has been left to President Ruto, his deputy, and uh, his Salim, deputy is not communicating. His Dabad. deputy is fighting the media. His deputy's message is media is Azimio. No, no, actually, yes. I, I, I think for the deputy, and that's the problem. His, his only fault is that um, his only fault, as far as communication is concerned, mm. is that uh, he does not uh, sugarcoat issues. It tells you that uh, we have this kind of crisis and that is how we are facing it. Mm -hmm. One may say that in some other markets, there may be need to be a bit uh, no, diplomatic. No, no, Why are you telling us things we all know? I mean, as though you've just discovered it. No, 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 no. I, I mean, what does he tell us that we don't already know? No, no, but, but, but you see, he is now, he sits in a room where he's got access to information, and when he tells you that uh, this is the kind of crisis you are facing, then uh, you can take it to the bank. A few days ago, Mr. Mdavad indicated that uh, give it another two years before we can, uh, before we can uh, turn the be corner. Rough However, over. Mm. again, the challenge they face outside managing citizens' expectations is that uh, they work in an environment which has been characterized by a lot of uh, propaganda, there is uh, misinformation and uh, disinformation. Mm -hmm. Where from? From uh, from Azimio. Like for instance, let's take a good example. And the media. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to talk about the media. Let's take a good example of. Uh, let's take the example of the aviation sector. Uh, you know when there were significant uh, incentives in the aviation sector taxation. Yeah, for helicopters. Yeah, the Azimio folks came up and said, Ah, we know now they are about to make money. They want to offer incentives to buy choppers. Mm -hmm. But the real story is. There and are, we know Azimio people also own choppers. Yeah, but the real story is mm. that Kenya was losing its position as an aviation center to our neighbors. Mm. Because uh, for people who have those uh, choppers, and I see nothing wrong in having a chopper, you can have even 20. For those people who have uh, choppers, they take them to Uganda for repairs. Mm -hmm. And Wilson Airport here, the guys who started the human capital, were being rendered jobless. Yeah. So you reduce the cost of those pairs so that uh, you create more opportunities. But because of the deliberate uh, propaganda, misinformation, that uh, disinformation is that uh, these taxes are being lowered so that these guys want to buy choppers. Let's come to but housing. Mkua. So Roti no, no. has been ahead of us when it comes to these aviation matters for decades. It didn't start yesterday. No, but we, we are losing out because uh, I've got people... I wouldn't call them my friends, but I know people who have choppers who are taking them to Uganda. But now with this kind of environment, it's coming back. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk about housing. The people who are opposed to housing, and you've hosted uh, the subject matter experts, who are saying that uh, Kenya's problem is not housing. Kenya's problem is uh, income. But when you've got a boost in the housing sector, you're going to address the uh, housing thing. So there's been all those uh, challenges. So mm -hmm. in my view, Kenya Kwanza must also learn how to manage this uh, propaganda misinformation and uh, disinformation. What makes you think they want to manage these things? What makes you think they're not happy with the status quo? That they're quite happy with the way things are? I, I don't think that uh, when Kenya Kwanzaa, I mean the, the Kenya Kwanzaa leadership, when they work up, up in the morning and every Kenyan is complaining about the cost of unga, the way unga is not coming down, I don't think they go back at home happy people. How do you they know must, this? How, how do you even suppose they, they this? They must manage this. Bro, mm. every single day Somebody, some people, many people, statistics tell us we're close to 5 million people who do not know whether they're going to eat or not. That number hasn't gone down, Chief. I, I think the biggest challenge is for Kenya Kwanzaa. So, Kenya Kwanzaa has been in power, we're going to a year now. About 20% of the time. Are you, They've done 20%. are you telling me, even if it was 2%, are you telling me that everything else is more important than making sure that the people in your country have at least one meal a day and they're guaranteed. Are you telling me anything else is more important than that? Food, food security is among the, the reasons no, why... No, it is not. It, it is the most... My friend, food, if people cannot be assured of even one meal a day, we have a very serious problem. And in this country, we have that problem already. And that's why they're addressing the supply side of our food by giving these people the subsidies. Yeah, but my view problem. is... If you know them, if you know them personally, tell them their problem is communication. Yeah, but, but before we that go there, their problem. because I can see the clock is uh, running, mm. I formed this impression that uh, it's uh, as if there's a gentleman in a room winking at a girl in the dark. So, you know, you can wink the entire night for 12 hours, and then in the morning your eyes will be all red, 
but uh, the girl has not seen your signs and you have your hand on the switch mm. yeah so now that guy's not then, winking yeah he's, then, he's, then he's what doing, they must do he's doing something do, else with his eyes what they must do is to manage those expectations yeah. by communicating their key successes communicating the Kenya Kwanza success must not be limited to the president the deputy president and the prime cabinet secretary it's uh, and the success is not vanquishing the it's media it's all <laughs> hands on deck no I, I, no no a few days ago no no a few days ago the the, the ict and cabinet as a media meeting at night to plan the no no, the, no, 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 no the ict <laughs> cabinet secretary indicated <laughs> mm-hmm. that uh, there must be a very solid relationship between the media yeah. and government the fourth estate and even musalem david indicated as much and mm-hmm. in my view because i'm uh, in the media mm-hmm. the media must be ready to be criticized of course and also mm-hmm. the government must be ready to be criticized but when you are offering your criticism it must be done in with some sort of a civility some sort of a decency definitely you, you know you must criticize you the media to to yeah. thank you this must for joining I was just us. beginning yeah wow. yep. imagine that is what always happens <laughs> as you're beginning as we yes. bring it to an end keep <laughs> it here for more conversations <laughs> coming up in the next hour the leadership of Kenya Kwanza Martha Karua leadership of Azimio will be here spice up your life Good morning, this is Nizu, I'm Dennis Aseto. Kenya, Republic of Congo and Central African Republic will join forces in the fight against terrorism and insecurity in the continent. President William Ruto said the three nations are committed to achieving lasting peace and stability in the continent. He said they will share intelligence and take common positions on international platforms to boost Africa's peace agenda. The head of state said the countries will work closely in combating radicalization and violent extremism in order to achieve peace, security and stability. He made the remarks during a meeting with President Faustine Ashange, Todera of Central Africa Republic and Denis Sasungweso of the Republic of Congo in Oyo and the Republic of Congo. Weeks after the enactment of the Finance Act, Kenyan workers have begun the push for salary reviews to cushion them from the increased taxation expected to take effect once the court gives a verdict on the controversial taxation laws. The Kenyan National Union of Teachers has issued the teacher's employer with a 14-day ultimatum to come to the negotiating table to review the non-commentary, non-monetary collective bargaining agreement signed in 2021. I want to tell Teacher Service Commission that we are ready to push them to the table so that teacher remuneration is also considered within the strategic plan. Earlier on, TSC had made a proposal of $2 billion for teacher promotion. That was welcome. Although the Treasury reduced the $2 billion to $1 billion for teacher promotion, we still want our Teacher Service Commission to sit with us and open the avenue of negotiations once more. We are out and we have written to Teacher Service Commission and have given them 14 days to bring us to table so that we start review of the non-monetary CBA that we signed in 2021. The teachers' union says teachers across the country are struggling to make ends meet under the prevailing harsh economic times and want the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to review their salaries upwards to cushion them against the increase in taxation. Quality residents can now access health care with ease after Governor Fatuma Chani issued a directive to all public health facilities to offer free medical services to all. The county is aiming at cushioning residents from huge hospital bills and improving general health amid the rising cost of living and financial constraints. Achani said residents will access free treatment in all public clinics and health centers across all 20 wards. The governor said the offer is also extended to ambulance services, adding that the vehicles is normally fueled and serviced by the county government. Kenya soldiers and troops from Somalia National Army over the weekend killed 40 Al-Shabaab terrorists in an offensive on the lower Juba region that is still under control of the militants. The Al-Shabaab militants were killed in an offensive on their camp in Walmaru, a town located 40 kilometers from Afmadu. The area is near the Kenya-Somalia border, which is often breached by the terrorists.
Two senior officials who forced female workers to remove their underwear over sanitary pad dispose of in the wrong bin will be back in court today after spending the weekend in police custody. Vivian Okamukoko and Rose Opondo were Friday arraigned in a Limuru court where the police sought to detain them for seven days pending the completion of investigations. The two suspects had to spend the weekend at Tigoni police station after Limuru senior principal magistrate Jared Magoli said the court needed some time to give directions on the matter. An Anglican Church of Kenya provost at the All Saints Cathedral, Reverend Sami Wainaina, bid farewell to the church after serving for 13 years. During the installation of his successor, Reverend Canon Evans Molo, Wainaina thanked the church for according him the support he needed to be the personality he is today. Wainaina will now be moving to London, the UK, to take up the role of advisor on Anglican communion affairs for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Bowlby, during his tenure. At All Saints, Wainaina had carved a name for himself as a fearless church leader who spoke truth to power. And Khartoum International Airport has said that the Sudanese Civil Aviation Authority extended the closure of Sudan's airspace until July 31st with the exception of humanitarian aid and evacuation flights with permission from authorities. Sudanese airspace was closed to regular traffic after military conflict erupted between the country's army and the paramilitary rapid support forces in mid-April. And President Volodymyr Zelensky hailed a brave Ukraine on the f- 500th day of Russia's invasion as the war's toll mounted with eight deaths reported in Russian rocket fire. Zelensky published on social media an undated video of a visit of Snake Island in the Black Sea, a symbol of Ukraine's defense against Russia. This is Newswire. Dennis Asato. Good morning. Spice FM Kisumu A little bit of traffic on the um, so this is North Airport Road it's going towards Outer Ring it's not a little bit actually if I'm to be honest it's quite some traffic it's heading on to Outer Ring Lunga Lunga very busy it's taking off some of that traffic that's heavy on Jogo Road but then causes some traffic going towards the Likoni Interchange and touching a little bit on the Southern Bypass. It's busy on Langata Road. It's busy on Railo Dingaway. Busy on Gong Road as you're trying to get into the city. Valley Road also then busy touching on Kenyatta Avenue. Heavy traffic on the Thika Superhighway. It's coming in heavy as well on Kiambu Road and other parts Limuru, Ruaka, all of this. It is traffic hour officially on a Monday morning. Are you stuck somewhere? Let us know. We'll find alternate routes um, and if you do find an alternate route, let us know that as well. And then let's talk on Spice FM, KE on Twitter. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, Wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. Seven this after eight is the morning. situation Welcome room. The, third the, hour of the situation room. Kenya's biggest conversation, working with Colgate to supply water to 150,000 people in some parts of the country. 30 water wells being done by Colgate, and this is in conjunction with Naivas Supermarket. Colgate are saying, go to Naivas, buy Colgate, and you will be doing one big thing. That is 
making children smile. Those children who do not go to school because they have been sent by their parents to go fetch water long distances or when they go to school then the head school head is like all right we need water for our toilets for sanitation for cleaning so the first thing we're going to do first two lessons we're going to do some water business so they lose out on school work just because of water and very many other things so what Colgate has done it's it's been working with partners to identify some of these areas where they serious scarcity of water but there is available water underground they help to sink the water wells and they get the water out and then the communities benefit so all you need to do to help this walk into naivas or go to the naivas online platform they have a very vibrant e-commerce platform purchase call gates and off we go our next guest is in the studio. Senior Council Martha Karoa is the NAC Kenya party leader, is an Azimio leader. Good morning, Martha. Good morning. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation again. Thank you for having me. It's been a while. Yes, it's been. But good to have you here. We're going to have various conversations, you know, about what the Azimio strategy has been. We know about Saba Saba and we saw what happened in Saba Saba. We know about the signature drive. Uh, we have questions about that just to understand what the strategy is. But before we do that, CT has the day's proverb. Mm. Our proverb for the proverbs for the whole of this week come from the country of Sudan. Mm -hmm. Northern Sudan. No? Khartoum, Sudan. Khartoum, Sudan. <laughs> okay. Yes. You know, when the ancient Egyptians and the Arabs referred to Northern Sudan as Kush, mm. I am told that the Arabic translation of it was land of the black people. Mm -hmm. And indeed they are. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kenyans think they are black. They mm. have no clue. They, yeah. are, they are some genuinely black people, as in they are dark to a fault. Mm -hmm. But of interest is how a civilization that was once held as one of the biggest and the most advanced civilizations on the planet upon attaining independence what has characterized the country is civil strife after civil strife a revolution followed by a coup within a very short time a revolution followed by a coup and their leadership has always been yes there's somebody who heads a council but a revolutionary council with somebody emerging as a leader mm. until this current kind of strife in fact most people assume that the, the strife they're undergoing is the first one mm -mm, fourth so the proverb for the day mm -hmm. hot water is not a playground for frogs hot water is not a playground for frogs mm. martha what's your interpretation of this one Wishmo smiles. I think <laughs> many interpretations. <laughs> mm. If we were to take ourselves as uh, the frogs, mm. as human beings, then hot water would equally not be our playground. Mm. And there are situations that are like hot water. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's not our playground. No. So we better be careful. Very. Straight into the conversation then, Martha. On Friday, the leadership of Azimio had called for nationwide protests yeah. to come out and send a message to the government yeah. on taxation on other issues. And this is rallying. One of the things was a rallying call for a boycott of taxes, among others. We saw what happened. We saw what happened in Nairobi. We saw what happened across the country. Overall, when you start back at the end of the day as the leaders of Azimio, how did you score the day? Did you succeed? Was it successful? It was highly successful. Mm -hmm. um, what I can say is that uh, this civil action was devolved. This is the beginning of devolution of civil action or people's action. Mm. And uh, the way the propaganda of the Ruto regime has been is like the demonstrations are uh, an affair for our leader, Raila, and his people. But Friday proved mm. that wrong. We had very vibrant demonstrations in Kisi, and mm. there was no Azimio top leadership. It's the people's action. Mm -hmm. The same with Mombasa. And you saw in various other parts of the country, in Nairobi, 
in Kirinyaga, I launched the collection of signatures in a town hall meeting, mm -hmm. which was very well attended. And there were various actions. You saw Kalonzo in, uh, in um, uh, Kadiani, in Machakos, mm. and uh, there are many, many other places. And uh, the response of the people was very good. Demonstrations were peaceful mm. until police took violence to the demonstrations. Mm. In Mombasa, the police had even uh, publicly assured them that they would facilitate, meaning overseeing peace. Mm. But they are the ones, unprovoked, who attacked the demonstrators. The same in Nairobi, as they were marching to the city center. And it's not an offense to come to the city center. They were just expressing. And in a way, mm. Nairobi was able to show that people are there. Every day we are facing these questions from the media mm. and uh, from uh, detractors that, oh, how many people. I invite them to count how many people marched from Kamkunji towards the city center. And that's just a tip of the iceberg. Mm. That's the way it's been <coughs> wherever we go in Nairobi. Whether it is uh, that uh, uh, Kawangware route we did the other day, mm. whether it is Kibra, whether it is Madare, whether it is Embakasi, that is the signature. Mm. And even when we had countrywide rallies, that was the signature. And I think it is time. We've started with that proverb. Mm. Let's all agree that uh, hot water is not a playground <laughs> for frogs. You see, we may wonder why Khartoum's Sudan has had four upheavals. It's about people exercising power for themselves, not for the people. Because if it is for the people, then when people speak, mm. you pause and listen. So mm. my message to the Ruto illegitimate regime is listen to the voices of the people. What was the message on Friday? When you were in, in uh, Kirugoya, in, in Kirinyaga County, when the others were across the country, what was the message for the Saba Saba? Was, was there one co co coherent message? Concrete yes, message? I was in the Fathers, which is uh, on the borderline of uh, Gishugu and Moya, mm. just a place where everybody could meet. Why is it and, called uh, the Fathers, by the way? The, because uh, there was a chief known as the Fathers. So the father, so mm. it becomes the fathers. We have Kutus, there was a chief called Goto. Mm. The white man could not say Goto. So it's he said Kutus, Kutus, it became Kutus. We also have Jegas, where we had Chief Jega. So it's of names and people. Okay. So we were at the fathers, mm. and the message was consistent. We've been telling Kenyans, look, you have power. Article 1 says sovereignty resides with the citizens of Kenya. Mm -hmm. That's a constant message. And we are telling the people they cannot exercise that sovereignty either through elected representatives or directly. Since the elected representatives have refused or are tone deaf, a majority of them, to the people's cries and needs, it is time to exercise that sovereignty directly. Since there is no place enough to hold a general meeting of the Kenyan public, mm. we will hold as many meetings all over the country. And how then can Kenyans express themselves? And how can those who ask, but how many are you, know how many we are? So the people will hold their own referendum of signatures. So that by the time we hit the threshold of 10 million, then we know a majority of Kenyans are speaking. So that those signatures are people exercising their will directly, mm -hmm. their sovereignty directly. They are not for taking to any institution. It's literally a body count of the people who are supporting the cause. Do, yeah. you, do you see this position mm. as one that is used as a conduit through which the voice of the people will be really heard or is it an Azimio voice? And I think that's the question. Are we talking about Kenyans saying something and using this platform to express that? Or is it still the grievances that Azimio has? 
the grievances or as of Azimio mm. are Wanjiko's grievances. From day one, mm. we have talked about cost of living. The Ruto regime has shown Kenyans the contempt card. Cost of living was bad when we started. End of year, last year, early this year. Mm. It has been exacerbated by the measures taken in the finance bill. That's a contempt card. Mm. And I think this is hitting everybody where it hurts most, on your plate, on your sick bed, on education, on transport, on virtually everything. That cannot be an Azimio, Araila, or Karua problem, or Kalonzo, if you like. It is a, a problem that is hitting everybody where they are. It's actually economic violence mm. on the people of Kenya. The second issue about electoral justice, and that's why we were demanding the servers to be open. Mm. When elections are manipulated, it is the voices of the voice of the people that is being trashed. It is so much a people issue. Mm -hmm. There is a reason why people elect, make choices to elect, because they have hopes mm -hmm. that their aspirations, their needs will be looked after by their representatives. You can see the sorry situation we are in as a direct consequence of trashing the people's voice. So that issue is a people's issue as well. And it's the same as appointment of IABC commissioners. Mm. Is it a William Ruto commission? Mm. Is it a Kenya Kwanzaa commission? Or is it a Kenyan commission? You don't abuse the position you have usurped or sat on by whatever means to make a personal commission. That's what we are saying. When it c comes to the fourth issue, respecting multi-party democracy, and our constitution proudly states, Kenya shall be a multi-party democracy. Mm -hmm. When you start buying off elected members to cross over to your side or to vote with you without doing what is right, because members are not tied, they can cross the floor, but the consequence is that you go back to the voters. So when you start abusing and, uh, uh, what shall I say, undermining multi-party democracy, again, you are trashing the voice of the people. That constitution we made is the people's, if you like, covenant mm. with those entrusted with the leadership. So when you abuse it, you abuse the people. Mm. All those are people issues, and that's why they resonate with the people. And the issue of the day is firstly the cost of living. Mm. Yeah. You know, this message, and I'll, that's what I was asking about messaging, it appears it had gotten to a point where it concretized into a message mm. that had been broken down into the four issues that you've said. Yeah. Before it came to the four issues, there were very many issues as you're going around the country with the town halls. Yeah. And at that point, you said we were listening to the people so we can get the issues. You came with the four issues as Azimio. And when the president then said let us sit down and have some bipartisan talks it was clear what azimio was taking to the table these are the four issues since then those issues appear now to have taken a back seat when it comes to the issue of tax and i'm using this in reference to the calls for friday's demonstrations yeah in the run-up to friday's demonstrations it was not about these four issues it was about now civil disobedience when it comes to tax. And we said, this is a call for tax boycott. We have moved the messaging from cost of living, from IEBC, from multipartism and all. We are saying now, let us walk to work, let us carpool, let us do this and the other. But come Friday, you are not carpooling. You are not walking to the demonstrations. You're not using public means, like uh, uh, encouraging us to use public means and cram ourselves into PSVs and, in fact, we even load ourselves into double the capacity of PSVs. You, the leaders, are still driving in your big vehicles and you know what that publicly means. So I, 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 people get confused with 
what exactly is the azimio message every time they call us out to demonstrate i think there's something you're missing what's that the finance bill is about cost of living and i have just said that the issue number one so when we are talking about tax boycott it's all about cost of living you cannot at this time when people are so economically battered start raising taxation you forget to raise the pay you raise taxation mm -hmm. to a person who is already unable to afford three meals a day for themselves and their families to a person who has already fallen arrear on in arrears on fees and on top of the usual taxation pay as you earn you are now imposing a taxation for housing in quotes we don't know whose houses because for some of these low earners and they are the majority mm. they would have to take close to 70 years to merit the an, a house say of two million shillings mm -hmm. so what housing are you taxing them a housing fund which is not for them mm. and which they have not identified as a priority remember the constitution also gives us the right for public participation true where did people say that they wanted houses people have spoken the media has done polling the various media houses and over 90 percent didn't want that taxes so you are imposing a punitive and oppressive tax to an already battered population you are raising the taxation on fuel from 8 to 16 percent making transportation and having a ripple effect which makes everything else go up including food on people who cannot afford a meal a day because there are some households that are going without a meal so it is unconscionable taxation must look at the situation of the person being taxed mm. and if you look at our constitution article 43 social and economic rights it's the responsibility of the state to ensure that people have adequate food that means that those who cannot afford the state has to step in health yep. it's also an issue the state must take up mm -hmm. water yeah. housing and also uh, education so housing among is there. other housing what that means is that you have programs that provide housing housing has been on the table ever since the kibaki government came in mm. it was taken a step further and you remember during the kibaki government the kibra, kibra houses were done during uhuru's Tenya, and I'll call it Ohuruto because both of them were there. Mm. Houses were done in Nairobi and Mombasa. Houses have been done all the time, mm. but people have not been forcefully uh, made to tax. tax, tax. For Actually, literally removing food on the plates of the most oppressed. You exempt helicopter owners from taxation mm. on parts, but you remove food subsidies. In a country where the constitution tells you that you have to ensure that nobody uh, stays without the basic needs. So we are saying mm. our message has not moved. The call so to a, action the, the call to action is mm. diverse actions okay. from tax boycott. You asked why we are not working. If I tell you about myself, long before the taxation issue came, I always carpool. In fact, there are meetings we have appeared in one car mm. with eugene at times with other people car pulling is not a new thing to us mm. even to do the things we do we have to cut costs of how we operate so we are not telling people things we have not done so when we when car pull when you say let's have a tax boycott yeah how exactly do we boycott these taxes how do we not pay the housing fund housing levy how do we uh, not pay the extra 8% VAT on fuel? Ask How me. do we not pay excise on airtime and the rest? How do we boycott these taxes? Tax avoidance is not an offense. Mm. So you can find innovative ways. Like buying from a mama boga means you're not paying the 16% VAT. So you can avoid taxation. 
anywhere where you can avoid it. Buy less fuel by carpooling. And I'm saying carpooling is something we already uh, practice. It doesn't mean that I'll now park my car and start using a matatu. If I have to, I will. But there are other innovative ways, carpooling with friends, minimizing the places you go to, all those things. We are not talking of things that are not practical. And asking the matter so to people. So what you're basically saying is let's cut our costs. Cut our costs and avoid. It's not a tax boycott. It's a tax a boycott. If I cut my costs, mother, it's yeah. not necessarily a tax boycott. You're basically just telling me, you know what, Eric, th- times are tough, so adjust your life. I need Adjust you- your life, go to a lower house so that now the amount of rent that you pay that goes into the tax, into the housing tax is less in terms of uh, rental income is less. Uh, take up a a pay cut so the amount of money that you then deducted in terms of 1.5 percent of your income that is me adjusting my livelihood no it's Martha, a, not it, it, it's also tax. about those who can mm. will boycott mm. remember not everybody is even in the mainstream of paying taxes so you find ways to avoid giving this illegitimate regime the money they are so hungry for and um you can see already through the court, the stay has given Kenyans relief, even if just for a few days, because the taxation that applies today is the taxation of yesterday. And it appears that those in the illegitimate regime are sometimes not well schooled because they were saying that they will now not get taxes, which is not true. They are getting, but at last year's rate, what was stopped is the rise. And there are many, many other places where people are being forced to pay more. Look at uh, the people earning uh, 500000 and above, how much they are being raided. Remember, these are salaries you've already committed either to a mortgage, to this, your children are in a more expensive school. It, this taxation is not an Azimio issue. It's hitting everybody where it hurts most. Martha, I know we're going to go to a break in a minute, but I just have to ask, mm. if we're looking at a tax boycott, yeah. what would it achieve then in on the side of government? What would that achieve? Leave creative ways of how people can actually get this done. But then in terms of sorting out this issue, at whatever level, it what is would that achieve? Just, le- I mean, making them get less money because they have refused to listen to Kenyans. They are making life more difficult. They ought to be denied that which they are seeking. And I want to give you one example. Mm. Mm. You remember the Karangata Association? Yes. When they were refusing to pay to the city council. Yep. And the court actually allowed them. And a, an account was opened where the taxes would be deposited mm. until the case was heard and determined. And if it was in favor of the council, then they would take the money. Because it was a case of no taxation without any service. Mm. Yeah. So there are very many ways. This is just a tip of the iceberg. There will be many follow-up actions. Time for that break. Half past eight. Azimio leader, now Kenya party leader, senior counsel Martha Karua is our guest in the Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation on KTN Home, on Spice FM, on YouTube and on Facebook. Live streaming this show here. If you miss any part of a show, just go back onto YouTube and you'll find them there. All our recordings. As you take this break, Martha, have you heard of Showmax? You're very busy, but sometimes you know you need to relax, put your feet up, switch on the TV and watch Showmax. And we'll tell you why. Yes, and I'll also mm. tell you, and then I'll pass you over to CT because he's watched the first episode and huh? he's waiting <laughs> for the next episode that's coming out. So a woman runs into f- what she wants to call fortune in a bag. Okay. It turns out that her older brother, who she doesn't really understand why, is involved in the crime that then saw this money being gotten in the bag. So she's in a bit of a dilemma. Should she take this money and say... It is Sigodo. He has helped us. <laughs> or should she report and say, we found this money, what should we do with it? It then turns out that her brother's also being looked for by the crime boss. All of this is on Showmax. It's Showmax's latest um, original title that premiered last week. And every week there's a new episode. And so now this week we want to see what happens next. On Thursdays, right? 
Of yeah. course, you couldn't have watched it on Thursday. You were preparing for Saba Saba Friday, but CT watched it, and you enjoyed it. Well, you know, when it, when we were first when it was first mentioned, I did, <laughs> and when I explained to my colleagues the themes that I saw, they asked me if I was back in class mm. teaching literature, and I said yes. You see, conflict, especially moral and ethical conflict, makes for an excellent theme, and this is what you find in this movie. Okay, we'll try. Mm. <laughs> Very good. Time for that break. Back shortly. <laughs> this is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. You think you can uh-huh. guess the year? 2007. That's when the theme song, that's when it premiered for the James Bond movies. You're half yeah. correct. But in terms of guessing the year? Mm. Okay, if not 2007, then 1963. Oh, now you're just throwing things, eh? You're throwing the Sufria and everything outside. <laughs> the Spice Drive. <laughs> big, big, big hair and the biggest hits from the best decade. Yeah, Tune in to The Spice Drive with me, Edward Quatch, 3 to 7 in the PM. The Spice Drive, only on 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. It's Damn. 14 degrees, sunny conditions in Nairobi, highs of 24 and lows of 11. Sunny at 17 in Nakuru, highs of 26 and lows of 13. It's sunny at 14 in Yeri, 24 will be the high. And we'll see highs of 23 in a sunny Eldoret at 14. It's 23 and sunny in Mombasa and 25 and sunny in Malindi, 21. Sunny conditions through Kisumu. And at 20, it'll be sunny through the day in Kakamega, going to highs of 28. It's mostly sunny at 19 in Kampala, highs of 28, and we'll see highs of 31 in a sunny Dar es Salaam at 25. Minus 2 in Johannesburg. The sun is out though, highs of 8, and we'll see highs of 30 in a cloudy Lagos at 24. It's 21 and sunny in Kinshasa, highs of 31 and lows of 21. up your life. You've probably seen the worst of traffic hour this morning. A little bit left on the eastern bypass as you're going out towards Rai, but then we see a little bit here just around North Airport Road, but we should be fine. Lunga Lunga still pretty heavy. Manyanja Road feeding onto Jogo Road is heavy and Landish Road pretty busy as you get into the CBD. Onto Gong Road, Haile Selassie, all of this. Rai Lodinga Way very busy. It's taking on traffic coming in from Langata Road. The rest of it goes towards Aerodrome out onto Uhuru Highway. Still not giving up on the thicker superhighway. Traffic then heavy past survey through towards the CBD and we're seeing bumper to bumper traffic quite heavy on Kiambu Road as well coming out of Westlands also pretty busy still for now we're probably out of traffic on about half hour or so let's keep an eye on things and see how it progresses let's talk on Spice FM KE on Twitter Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. News with Azimio and now Kenya party leader Martha Karua, who is in the studio, talking about the Azimio strategy going forward. The collection of signatures, you said it's not for, to be taken anywhere. It's just like sort of a vote count yeah it's like checking your p- own popularity how many people resonate with your message so yeah, why do you need people, people to sign why do you need people then to come and give you their signatures because it's for a serious issue what issue when we reach the 10 million threshold yeah then citizens will be ready to take action why 10 you see, we have uh, 20,000 uh, registered, just about 20, 000, 20 million registered voters. Yes. About 14 million voted. Yes. And uh, Chebukati alleged, which is not true, that 7 million voted for William Ruto. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we need a higher threshold than that, than his support, what is said to have been his support base. Okay. Yeah, so 10 million should just be enough. How long are you giving this drive? A week, three months, six months? A short while. We are not saying when, but uh, it will be a short... It's, this is a short-term strategy. 
not long term. So what we've seen, even after we shared that you would be coming, yeah. is questions of people saying, so what next after I give my signature, or should I give my signature? What next? To what end? Action, but the signature, the form collecting is saying what for. So as you sign, you sign from a position of knowledge. Those who signed in Kirinyaga knew what they were signing for. Mm. Are These are signatures for? to send the illegitimate Ruto regime home for their oppressive and punitive taxes mm. and all those other issues. So how do they how does the signature of the person who signed this end up sending Ruto home? Once I think, I think that that's the roadmap that people are asking. And you know, Martha, you are senior counsel. You understand the law, you understand the constitution, you actually midwife this constitution among others. Yeah. So you understand the constitution. How does collection of ten million signatures end up sending William Ruto home? I already explained that. I, I guess said I didn't get it. Please repeat. it is not possible, even if you have huge rallies, to demonstrate that a majority of Kenyans support. So that's like a roll call. Plus also, where can we have our general meeting? So that general meeting will be in various places within Kenya. And once the signatures have reached that threshold, then we will communicate to Kenyans on the next move. You know, one of the things that I find confusing, this is me. Yeah. Perhaps it's because when I look at politics, I tend to juxtapose our politics, the politics of other countries. Yeah. Now, I am informed by those who understand the constitution better than I that our constitution doesn't actually allow for an opposition party. I'm not sure how this is true, but if there was an election and some people are said to have lost the election, then their position automatically, in my mind, reverts that of the opposition, my, in my mind, because they are not in power. So where are they? Now, there is the matter of the issues that Azimia has been raising. I mean, they're pertinent issues and they're real. But again, this is where now my confusion arises. I don't read much of what Azimia say would be the alternative. Like when they say we have a problem with food, what would Azimia do if they were in power? If they say this financial bill is completely nonsensical, okay, what would they offer? I say this because if we are to reach the end, that Azimio proposes, and let's say perchance they are in power. What is this thing that they're going to do different? I think the first place I would send you is yeah. to the manifestos mm. of the illegitimate Kenya Kwanzaa regime mm. and the Azimio manifesto. Mm. Okay? Mm. Since we are people who believe in the rule of law and uphold the constitution, mm. in a time like this, there would be food subsidies. Mm. We had clearly said that health will have universal health accessible to all. We had talked, said that we will have free education from nursery up to university. And what a serious government would do in this situation is not to raise taxation for an already battered economy, especially taxing people's salaries beyond where it is necessary. Mm. You would avoid non-priority spending. See all the leakages, because we lose one third of mm. the budget mm -hmm. to theft and abuse of the money. That is where you should tighten and avoid the leakage and get the money you want for the programs that you want. Mm. Look at what this government is doing. They are telling that person who cannot afford three meals a day to subsidize their lavish living. They had so much money, more than any other budget in history, more than the Uhuru budgets, on motor vehicles for three offices, for Ruto, for Gashagua, for Mudavadi. That's non-priority spending. When you're in an economic crisis, why must you buy new vehicles? If they were saying one for the top guy or something like that, this is splashing money. Yeah. They have opened offices of first lady, second lady, third lady. It is okay. Those offices can be opened, but don't allocate budget. I don't remember ever seeing a budget for first lady's office even in Kibaki's time. 
even in Uhuru Ruto regime, they didn't have. So you can see they are increasing lavish spending. See how they use government facilities. Helicopters, it is not campaign time. Mm. How do you need a he helicopter to move from Nairobi to Kiambu? And then you send all the guzzlers to By go way. and receive you when you, you arrive. Why does Ruto feel the need to run away from problems at home and be in foreign capitals daily? Why? And spend our money that way. And they go with large delegations. Look at uh, his um, cabinet secretaries when they go out. Most of them on chartered planes with large delegations. All this is non-priority -pri spending. So I'm saying there are many, many innovative ways. And you want to see the difference between Azimio and uh, Kenya Kwanzaa? Mm -hmm. Look at our manifesto. It's self-evident. Mm -hmm. All those areas where people are feeling the pinch, Azimio would do it differently. And there's enough money for that. Would it not be then... I, wouldn't, I don't want to use the word prudent, but would it then not be advantageous if indeed, as Emil reminded us of their manifesto and the things they said they would do? By the way, we do that all the time. It's only that what gets reported is what the person reporting considers as the highlight of the meeting. Mm. We do that practically in every meeting. If you listen to what I said in Kirinyaga on Friday, it's all about those things, how we, we would handle them. And this, ours is a unique constitution. Even after the court battle, where the court spewed in their own language, hot air, mm. the constitution still allows any Kenyan, and we are Kenyans, to ask for an audit of last year's elections. Look at Article 88. The court, I mean, the constitution still gives Kenyans residual power to take charge. Mm. Look at uh, Article 1 of the constitution. Our constitution is like no other. Mm. Go to 35 and see that we have a right to demand records be opened. Let's assume or believe for a minute what the regime says that they won. How would it hurt them? If we were to open the records, it would only reconfirm their win if they won. Mm. But they are fearful because they actually didn't win. And until we get to the bottom of this, Kenya will implode someday. Mm. We can't keep on having manipulated elections. Mm. If every returning officer, right from the polling station to the national, knew that immediately after elections and pursuant to the constitution, the records will be opened people would hesitate to rig. It is very important, and I mean, critical for this country that we verify the results of last year's election. We audit them. In Otherwise, mm. we are sitting on a time bomb. Mm. The water is continuing to hit. <laughs> and yeah. we agreed mm -hmm. and we are the frogs. that we are the frogs. Uh, <laughs> boiling water is not a playground for, for, for frogs. frogs. Yes. There has been, you know, even as we talk about, so Saturday, or Friday rather, yeah. being then the first day in this, you know, succession of events. Yeah. Where are we going next? And really to look at what do, what, what is the hope for um, subsequent events? What is the hope moving forward that this will achieve? I think the hope was written on the footprints of the people mm -hmm. on Friday that people have the resolve, people will come out and we encourage even those who remain out to come out next time. Mm. We are not going to unveil our strategy. That's not what people do in our circumstances do. As we move, we'll give directions. Mm. And this is an unfolding scene. Mm. So expect more. Mm. We will be peaceful. We remind the illegitimate regime that any undue force used on the people is actionable. Even if they don't act now, mm. it will be acted upon. We notice mm. that unnecessary force is always used in Nyanza, in Kisumu, in Migori, and now in Kisi. Mm. That's where most deaths have occurred. And even in Nairobi, 
certain areas there is more force than others and we are asking why do you use live bullets on unarmed demonstrators mm. isn't the tear gas enough can't you fire blanks this is war on the people economic warfare and criminal use of force and it will not be tolerated yeah. and what? kenyans mm. will exercise their sovereignty to remedy this situation what is the hope that the government of the day um will actually do or will acquiesce to uh, here because it it's definitely there is this movement that's going on martha it's clear that there's hope that they will say something or do something or behave in a manner then that will then say okay this is satisfactory what are you hoping we are not happen? expecting them to hear they have proved their hard of hearing we expect the ultimate decision to be that of kenyans mm. so we will mobilize kenyans mm. and kenyans will exercise their sovereignty and that is all i can say for now Martha, why has Azimio walked out of the bipartisan talks? We didn't walk out. What happened? They closed the door. Remember, these talks were supposed to take a very short time. Since Easter, mm. which was end of March going to April. April, May, June, now we are in July. More than 90 days. All the previous talks, mm. and I was involved in the IPPG talks. Yeah. I was involved in the Anand talks, mm. and we also saw the Kiraito Orengo, Kiraito Orengo talks. talks mm. No talks take beyond 14 days. Because they even, start and members don't walk out. Even those of uh, Anand took just a month, and they were so, so serious. When a regime is serious to listen and listen to its people, talks cannot take 90 days. No issue has ever been solved. Cost of living was not an issue to bargain. It's policy and action by the regime. Look at what they have done. Opening the servers, what discussions are there? You see, what the team negotiating has been subjected to is just filibustering, wasting of time. Not a single issue has been sat down on. Mm. And for that reason, the team withdrew. They were being kept for long hours. They arrived. The other team has not arrived. They take an hour. Then they filibuster when they come. Nothing, not a single issue. And our team rightly said, and we backed them, mm. no more talks. You know, we are beyond the talks. We, we sat here with the co-chair of the bipartisan committee. And this is uh, the owner of Murugara. And he said exactly the same things filibustering on the part of Azimio and such other tactics. If it is true, why example. are they calling them back? He gave Let's example. assume it's true yeah. and Azimio was filibustering. Why are they calling them back then to filibuster? Let us agree to disagree. Because they are hoping are that this time you'll throw, come back and you'll not be filibustering. We not are not going to throw words tactics. at each other. We will say, mm -hmm. gentlemen, and ladies, let's agree to disagree. Yeah. And end it there. Yeah. Do you think, Martha, the problem in our country is mostly with, or is only with President Ruto and his executive arm of government, or does it go to parliament and to counties? I would say the greatest pro problem is Ruto and his illegitimate regime. He has invaded parliament in an unprecedented way. Even President Moy did not break the law. He used to woo MPs and they would go back to the voter. This is the first time with a progressive constitution, an illegitimate regime has bastardized parliament. We are seeing them trying to interfere even by their own statements with the judiciary. So we are saying these are people... How has he done that though? The are there members? Make, are there members of ODM of Jubilee who have joined UDA, or joined the Mali National Congress, or joined Fort Kenya or any other Kenya Kwanzaa party? Mm. The law doesn't talk of joining. 
it talks of demonstrating and supporting the policies, deviating from the policies of your party. When people say they are now on the other side, haven't they demonstrated? Mm. You see? So you cannot ask about joining. Read, I mean, look at the law. The law doesn't say, it says associating. You know? Would it so leaving me? the position of your party to right. support... And it's not on, on op issues that the party whips. Sure. Mm. Yeah. But I have to ask, would it tell of the individuals then who've demonstrated the support for the other side? Or would it tell then of the persuasion that, as you say, the government is using? Does it not tell then of both sides? Here is an individual who's decided to go and demonstrate support for the other side in whichever way it was used, but it also tells something of what their original position may have been, able to be swayed so easily. When you either usurp like this regime usurped power, you are still bound and you pretend to be following the constitution, you are bound like every other person. The leadership you gave is not that of violating the law. Yes, the members are equally guilty, mm -hmm. but who is in a dominant position? Who is using state resources, state uh, power and influence? Yeah. You know, the greatest blame is on Ruto and his regime. And we have indicated that as one of the issues but in the talks. When he continues, yeah. it's a, another contempt card. So what would we be going to sit and do? I, Look I, at I, how they I see this as politics. Believe. It's it's how the game of politics is played. No. You persuade those across this the aisle to support your cause on various issues. We saw it with Moai Kibaki, and you were in that government. Yeah. After the 2005 referendum, Moai Kibaki formed a government of national unity. That's what he with called it. With the consensus it. of every party. That is allowed. He brought in the leaders, uh, members, in Timama, who was a can who joined the cabinet. Uh, Simeon okay. Yachai, who was the fourth I'll people, stop you there because you're cabinet. wrong. Ntimama was, he was not Kanu. He was LDP uh, he was and LDP. then joined us and we formed one strong party called National Rainbow Coalition. Later I'm, on, I'm wrong on Timama. Later on, Ford Simeon Nyachai uh -huh. and his Ford people formally joined the government. How did they formally join government? They became it a post there that time there was no provision for post election coalition. Yes. So it's just talks. And then you formalize that by appointing them to government. It's the same thing that had happened previously. And eventually Kanu also came into government okay. formally. So so it's a politics. We've no, seen it then. No, no, no. It we is saw wrong. it in the last five years. It's wrong. After Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga shook hands, there was a direct association of ODM MPs with his administration. Which, from where I sat, mm -hmm. we condemned because it robbed of the country opposition without formalizing the relationship. If you recall at that time, yeah. I condemned it. So you see those but with you in Azimio say, cannot no, no, no. then stand up and you condemn have, what Ruto they is will doing. Condemn. When he, you do not break the law today so that tomorrow when somebody else breaks the law, you say now uh, a president has been said we can be breaking the law. Mm. It is wrong and you cannot sit in a powerful position as a media house to tell Kenyans that a wrong committed often becomes a right. No, we must saying, continue the to The one who committed the wrong yesterday, no. without even apologizing for committing the wrong yesterday, cannot condemn today's wrong. Azimio was not in existence then. ODM was We in now existence. speak as Azimio, as a coalition party. And yesterday, those who committed that wrong included William Ruto, who was in the Uhuruto cabinet. Mm. We are saying, let us follow the law as it is. And by the way, even in the uh, handshake time, it was totally different because the entire ODM backed their leader, Raila Odinga, in the handshake. So there were no complaints from the party. In this particular instance, the illegitimate regime of Ruto is using state money and peddling influence to buy off members of parliament until their majority leader boasts how they bought members. This is actually criminal because it's bribery. Right. It is also wrong 
against the Political Parties Act, against the Constitution. We cannot sanction this. And it is wrong for us to sit here and make Kenyans believe that there is something right in those actions. We also can't Kenyans make Kenyans believe. Kenyans must resist completely this kind Azimio of action. is not powerless in this one. That's why we are taking action. Mm. We are taking several parties. I remember ODM has written to its members. Yep. Parties will take action internally. And as Kenyans, we are calling on every Kenyan of goodwill. We have lost the Republic of Kenya as we knew it. In its place, we have a colonial, exploitative and punitive regime. Together, we must resist and restore the state. And because they have declared this a company, and there are fewer than Kenyans who own this republic, we must find ways of excluding the company from the Republic of Kenya. We must reclaim back our republic. How do we do that? Mm. Let's begin with the signatures. And then you'll tell us what next. It's coming. Mm. Those who can interpret will interpret. This is the first time Kenyans are using Article 1. Just because it hasn't been done doesn't make it wrong. Right. Luckily today, we don't have to do anything outside the law. The law sanctions everything that we are doing. Mm. Yeah. Martha Karua, always a pleasure having you here. <laughs> <laughs> the now Kenya party leader is, mm -hmm. Azimio leader, mm -hmm. is senior counsel, mm -hmm. has been our guest today. She's telling us, all right, Azimio has got a strategy going forward. One of them is this one, a 10 million signature drive as you continue calling for rallies. When is the next rally? Wednesday. It was announced by Right Honorable. So it'll right and out. then on Wednesday you'll announce the date for the next one. There will be various actions. Can you give us a calendar so we can plan ourselves? Uh, when I those who are planning to be out of town, plan to be in town. Those who are planning to travel out of the country, give us a monthly calendar. It will come as we go along. <laughs> <laughs> you remember even last time we reached a stage where we gave you a calendar and told you Mondays and Thursdays. Yes. yes. So it's coming. Okay. Yeah. Keep it here for more conversations coming up in the next hour. Good morning, 9 a.m. Spice up your life. This is Newsworm Dennis Aseto. The grievances being raised by the Azmio coalition captured the voices of Kenyans. Now, Kenya leader Martha Karua told Spice FM that the issues they raise on cost of living touch on Kenyans' well being and which they have consistently raised. The grievances or as of Azimio are Wanjiko's grievances. From day one, we have talked about cost of living. The Ruto regime has shown Kenyans the contempt card. Cost of living was bad when we started end of year last year early this year mm. it has been exacerbated by the measures taken in the finance bill that's a contempt card mm. she adds that the selection of rebc commissioners is an exercise that should involve every kenyan and not be made to seem as though it is a kenya kwan's affair about electoral justice and that's why we were demanding the servers to be open mm. when elections are manipulated it is the voices of the voice of the people that is being trashed. It is so much a people issue. Mm -hmm. There is a reason why people elect, make choices to elect, because they have hopes mm -hmm. that their aspirations, their needs will be looked after by their representatives. You can see the sorry situation we are in as a direct consequence of trashing the people's voice. So that issue is a people's issue as well. And it's the same. As appointment of IABC commissioners. Mm. Is it a William Ruto commission? Mm. Is it a Kenya Kwanzaa commission? Or is it a Kenyan commission? Meanwhile, as new leaders are said to have a seat done today to strategize ahead of a fresh round of protests organized for Wednesday. Waipa Party leader Kalonzo Musyoka says that as the mere principals will meet and give directions to their supporters in regards to the anti government national protest, the Waipa leader found the claim that his life is in danger following the Saba Saba demonstrations that he held in Machakos County. Leaders accompanying Musyoka took issue with the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority for defying court orders that temporarily halt, halted proposed fuel price hike hikes. 
Busia Senator Kiyom Tata filed the petition after EPRA reviewed fuel prices by implementing the 16% VAT on the commodity as proposed in the Finance Act of 2023. Now, weeks after the enactment of the Finance Act, Kenyan workers have begun the push for salary reviews to cushion them from the increased taxation expected to take effect once court gives a verdict on the controversial taxation law. The Kenya National Union of Teachers has issued the teacher's employer with a 14-day ultimatum to come to the negotiating table to review the non-monetary collective bargaining agreement signed in 2021. I want to tell Teacher Service Commission that we are ready to push them to the table so that teacher remuneration is also considered within the strategic plan. Earlier on, TSC had made a proposal of $2 billion for teacher promotion. That was welcome. Although the Treasury reduced the $2 billion to $1 billion for teacher promotion, we still want our Teacher Service Commission to sit with us and open the avenue of negotiations once more. We are out and we have written to Teacher Service Commission and have given them 14 days to bring us to table so that we start review of the non-monetary CBA that we signed in 2021. And as the global community's attention is drawn towards food safety and food standards, the county government of Nakuru in partnership with Center for Agriculture and Bioscience International, CABI, have rolled out a campaign seeking to reduce the risk of pesticides to stakeholders in the food value chain. The initiative dubbed Kulima True, that has also received support from the Center for Behavior Change and Communication Center, is further aimed at raising awareness of environmentally friendly biocontrol and biopractice products, according to Deputy Director CABI Africa. Monica Kansime. Ex excessive use and misuse of pesticides is causing loss of biodiversity, destroying beneficial insect populations and reducing food safety. Now, Kenya is scheduled to host the 20th anniversary celebrations of the Maputo Protocol on the Rights of Women. The event opens today up until tomorrow and we will see hundreds of delegates from the African Union member states and others from overseas attend. The Cabinet Secretary for Public Service, Gender and Affirmative Action, Aisha Juma, says she is elated that Kenya is hosting the event, which she says is instrumental in evaluating the progress made towards women's rights protection while taking stock of the achievements made while also also formulating strategies to address challenges that still hinder the rights and role of women in African societies. I'm Dennis Asseto. Good morning. Ninety-four point four Spice FM, Nairobi. All right, uh, a few minutes after nine o'clock and still some traffic here and there in the city. We're still seeing something of it on the Fika Superhighway as you come past survey, but that's going to fizzle out in no time as it's doing on Kiambu Road this morning. Just a little bit of it left and on Waiaki Way coming out into the city. Um, we'll probably see the most of it in the CBD for now, but we've done well this Monday. Jogo Road just a little bit left here and there, industrial area off of... Lunga Lunga and then spilling over to Likoni is what it was pretty heavy, but now we're all right. Just a little bit of the last of it left on Raila Odinga Way coming off Langata Road. So well done on Monday. Uh, out of traffic on about half hour. So let's see what it's still. Spice of MKE on Twitter. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, Wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room, the Come only way to start your day. Final hour of the Situation Room this morning. Uh -huh. Tell us about Faithless. Faithless, uh. Esther, found some money, decided, ha, 
Am I going to use this money for my own personal gain? Or will I go and talk to my other three church friends and say, what should we do with this money, guys? So there's a dilemma and they're saying, should we use the money? Should we return it? Return it to where? Where mm. did it come from? We mm. do not know. Turns out, Faith's elder brother is caught in this dragnet of crime. And she says, how did you get involved in all of this? Then it turns out there's some guy who's looking for her. It's madness. It sounds like a real life story. It's it like is. so many things happening at the same yeah. time, eh? Faithless is Showmax's latest original title. It premiered last week, and every week following, there will be a new episode that is unleashed. So everybody, you can have an idea of what's really happening in the story. I want to know what happens. So next. every Thursday, new episode. Shh. Every la- new, new one. episode, so okay. we can get to know. And it's nice because they give it to you like antibiotics, just a little bit, so you know what's going on. <laughs> then you can now get some more. You know the production Showmax. itself. Oh. When you look at the movie world. Mm. It is actually very well produced. Quality. Yes. All the, the literary aspects that are normally relevant to make an episode, a storytelling, a visual story, mm. well made. Believe me, they are all there. Mm. If you're talking of suspense, it's there. Mm-hmm. If you are talking about uh, wrongdoing, it's mm-hmm. there. Somebody has died, somebody has been shot. Mm-hmm. If you are talking about what I called moral or ethical conflict is there mm. Mm. so you keep wondering okay now so what is going to happen next if you talk about collusion people getting together to talk and decide what it is they're going to do it's right there if you talk about kenyanness and, and the kenyanness <laughs> and wondering now okay money that is found suddenly becomes yours because really? you found it yes mm. now yes Pesa kuogota. Our next guest turns 40 today. Do like that. <coughs> mm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bonnie. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Hey. Hey. My heart is melting. <laughs> 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 Happy birthday, Bonnie. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Boniface Mwangi. Good morning. Karibu to the fourth floor. Uh, Asante sana. You've crossed that barrier. Yeah, I'm so happy, man. I'm so excited. Next one, 60. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. This one, 40 and 50. Yeah. Believe me, that 60 arrives quickly. Mm. For real? It's talking to someone who has already reached and passed it. You actually wonder, where did the 50s go to? <laughs> They came and they went. You remember your 40th. Very clearly. You don't remember your 50th. Everything else is hazy. No. <laughs> 50 is hazy. Yeah. university fees is a problem. <laughs> 50 is hazy. Is this true? Is, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. At what stage do you get a second wife? Uh, no, it's, oh, no, no. Jokes. It's, it's, it was no, a no, joke. No, no, no. It is, it is <laughs> not You know why he's not laughing? Because he actually considered it as well. Oh, you did? One always considers it. Actualizing is not the dangerous thing. <laughs> You can consider all you like, but, but actualize but it anytime. Anytime <laughs> after forty, yeah. you can consider. All right, it doesn't. You don't have to actualize. I thought is okay. No, it's okay. Jerry will understand. You know what happened? Ah, yeah, 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 wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I came here for something else. <laughs> I had to go home to a cold bed. <laughs> she will understand. What she will do with it? She will understand. All right, <laughs> and you will know how she has understood it. <laughs> <laughs> City, yes. The day is proverb. Proverbs for the whole of this week come from the country of Sudan. We're talking about northern Sudan. Now, before secession, in 2011, it was the largest country in Africa. But rich history, fundamental to so many things. Anyway, our proverb for the day. Hot water is not a playground for frogs. Mm. Hot water is not a playground for frogs. Mm. What's your interpretation of that, Bonnie? Uh, that if you're a frog, avoid hot water. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it also, if you know that you are living in a glass house like President Ruto, then you should not throw stones. 
Who isn't in a glass in a glass house, Boni? I am not. <laughs> huh? I'm not in a glass house. That's where I can throw all the stones I want. Yeah. Yeah. But did you call yourself an activist or a politician? I am an activist. I'm not a politician. I'm not elected. I did not vie. I voted five, six years ago, and I was rejected, and I accepted my rejection and moved on. You know, I ask anybody who has ever presented himself to the people to seek their opinion as to whether they would like him as a leader or not. Do you really divorce yourself from politics? I do because I'm able to say that I there's a way I don't align, there's a way I don't kiss us. Mm. The things that I don't do. If I really was a politician, you'd see me in a Zimio rallies or at root of status having tea, but that's mm. not who I am. Mm. So you're not in a Zimio? No, I'm not a member of Azimio. I voted for Azimio. Mm. I have friends in Azimio. I have friends in Royal Odinga, mm. Mother Karua, and the leadership. Mm. Are you saying you don't have friends in UDA? Ah, many actually. <laughs> a lot of my <laughs> friends are in UDA. Mm. I know Eric Latif knows that very well because we have a lot of shared friends who are in this career and they left and they became uh, part of the government. So I have a lot of friends on both sides. Mm. Yes. But you're an activist. I'm an activist. The I'm the people's act- watchman. I'm the people's watchman. All right. Yes. Now we saw you uh in your proper character as the people's watchman taking some tear gas on saturday morning yes <laughs> uh, tell us what was that all about so on friday night i was having dinner with chief justice william tunga and we got a call that some people had been arrested during the day so we went to central mm. to take them some sanitary uh things and milk and bread the things that you need in a police cell mm. our idea was to bail them out and they also said that the person who's supposed to b- give you the receipt for cash bill is not around, come back the following day. So the following day we mobilized and went to many of us to go and help them get released. Mm. When you go there, there's a lot of politics between the OCS and orders from above. Mm. Uh, when the OCS realized that the crowd was gathering were more than the suspects in the, in, in the cell, he got officers who were sleeping in their plain clothes in party party to come and tear gas us. So we're getting tear gas to vacate the police station because they saw us as a threat. Mm. I don't know why. They are the ones who had the guns and the batons, but they saw us as a threat. So we got kicked out and we went online to try and uh, campaign for those guys to get released. They were released yesterday and we thought they were not going to get charged. Today they're in court. Why had they been arrested? Uh, they were arrested for, tr- for protesting in the CBD and, and asking the president, who they're referring as Zakayo, mm. Ashukishi taxes. Mm. and to lower the cost of living. So what was the charge? Causing public disturbance? Uh, taking part in an illegal a- assembly. And I don't think there's a day where the police have said any assembly is illegal unless it's pro-government. Because I was in these streets for about 10 years protesting. And every time we went to protest, we got arrested and beaten. So the police haven't changed. Mm. The law is very clear about protesting, but the police don't respect the law when it comes to protests. Now, of course, we saw CJ Emeritus, Professor Willy Mutunga, uh, even before he walked in there and he was talking about, I think you are the one who was recording him. Yes. And uh, he was talking about the police, the, the place of police officers in citizens demonstrating, right? As mm. somebody who has participated, organized and participated in many demos, we thought, let's invite you. Yes. We'd have also wanted to have Professor Mutunga here, but he wasn't able to join us. He's resting. What is it yeah. about demonstrations and police legally? How are those two treated from your understanding of the law so legally um so article 37 says that everyone has a right to assemble picket demonstrate deliver petitions and the process is you notify the police within two days so if i want to protest on wednesday i deliver a letter to the area of cs and say we're planning to protest these are route for protest now the work of the police to provide security at that particular protest. Mm-hmm. They come to escort the protesters and ensure that there is no violence or any looting or anything that bad happens. The problem is the police understand a notification is a, is a, is a, is a notification for them to assemble to come and beat you up. Because every time you notify the police, they don't show up carrying flowers, they show up with tear gas. And when they come and interrupt, because <coughs> the, the reasoning in our government is very <coughs> silly. Because a protest comes to an end. You don't have night protest. If I go to parliament to go and deliver a petition, mm. I'll deliver and go home. Mm. But the police don't want to do that. So they, they interrupt or interfere with you before you even reach your destination. And I wish they only allowed people to protest peacefully and go home. You know, they would even take out the sting in a protest. Because mm. if you go to a peaceful protest, 
it will be there'll be no headlines so the police every day do themselves very bad public relations because every day when they tear gas people then they press for the bad reasons mm -hmm. but we have seen very many demonstrations and protests in this country which have not been <coughs> tear gassed where people walk in, in on the streets of Nairobi carrying banners and placards and they end up going home why is it that there are some protests that end up with a clash between the police and the demonstrators uh the any protest that seeks to <coughs> address the president or make demands upon the presidency is met with brutality because the police saying and i bisha serikali you're shaming the government you're embarrassing the president we cannot allow you to do those things so the police have a very low tolerance of criticism so when they read the placards they're like e in anti government protest mm. you must disrupt but if you do a pro government protest or do a pro government prayers or anything that shows support to the government not they actually interact with you they let you protest they even give you water and escort you wherever you're going so so what you're saying is that there is no fundamental lack of understanding <clears throat> it's just lack of will to actually do what they are put there to do no no the police are just stupid oh, okay. yeah they are. they 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 refuse to follow the law then they blame protesters uh, one of the things that they are saying about protest is the looting vandalism and the violence this country has enough police officers uh, when the president is leaving the airport to go to state house or wherever if he's leaving nairobi to go to ngong they line up police from nairobi cbd all the way to ngong that means they can line up police officers the entire route not to beat people but to protect life and property but what they do they bring police in a very aggressive posture they bring them to beat up people they should bring them to, pro to protect life and property and if they think they don't have enough officers for a day or two they can withdraw some of the security protecting senators members of parliament uh good shades of politicians and chicken coops and just bring them to the, to come and protect life and property so you have enough officers i used to live in an estate mm. where there was a there was a peers living in the same estate with me and the ap was there used to be sent to go and buy milk by the house girl you know kazi yake na kosha gari hapo nje so you have a lot of idle officers who can be deployed to protect life and property problem is that they are deployed to go and beat up people i don't even understand why the government's bad pr let people protest then they go home those kids were in nairobi streets yesterday on friday they are small kids from the slums of nairobi wadapiga kelelo lale ko barabara na wende nyumbani let them protest and then it's just a simple simple thing the other day I was sending one of the president's kids a message asking what is your plan for this what does what's what plan does your dad have for this country mm. and even challenge i said actually i don't meet your dad but i'd like your dad to have dinner with my kids so he can answer some of those questions because my daughter always asks me will kenya ever become better will things ever change every day when you're driving you're bullied off the road people get robbed i got robbed last year i lost every didn't go to the police because the first thing you do when you go to the police they shake you down you walk in there you're a victim they want money from you <laughs> me even me i did not go to the police me i, I went home showered swallowed my pride <laughs> i was so humiliated went shopping and bought new phone and new things and said we move on regardless <laughs> you know what you're saying has been said before with regard to the police the police are senseless they are unfeeling yet the police live in the same country as us yes yet these same police when we don't have demonstrations and we don't have issues are the same people who often come to uh, situations where you have uh, you've had an accident mm -hmm. a scene of crime mm -hmm. when something has gone wrong they are relied upon to find people who have committed something wrong within the country mm -hmm. and we have instances where they do an excellent job instances instances yes. underline that yes mm. but more importantly i am of the view and my colleagues have shared this view with me that when you look at the police you get the impression that they are victims as opposed to being the people because the the ecosystem in which the police service exists is one which would be traumatizing for anybody mm -hmm. yes and if you lived in it mm. the likelihood of you looking for places to release your stress and pressure a demonstration is uh, just Perfect. tailor made for that 
all the frustrations you have in your everyday life, all the indignities that you go through. You mentioned an indignity. A police officer being sent to go and buy milk. Yes. Huh? And there's a house help who could very well go and do that. Being asked to wash a car, no, no, surely, that's indignity. Now, right across this country, there are people who will give very many examples. Mm -hmm. I am of that strong view. Yes. That what we see of the police is what you see of people who've been continuously abused and traumatized. So for them, it is very, very easy to meet the same on an unsuspecting public. That is my view. That is very true. Can I? So in, in 2018, and there's a clip online that I shared mm. uh, yesterday, David D. went to Madare and he told those young people that he police in your colony. And even if you take a young officer, a young man from this community, mm. take them to Kiganjo, and you bring them back here, they come <coughs> and shoot the other young people that they left in the community. Mm -hmm. That's the training. Um, how do you recruit police officers? It's not about brains, it's brawn. The first thing you have to do as a male officer when you're being recruited, you go to a playground or a field, they're told to remove your shirt, you're told to run around, then they, they select some of you, then they tell you to chase a lorry, then you catch up with the lorry, then they come and open your mouth, then they count your teeth. So when it comes to competence and brains, mm -hmm. it's the last thing they hire. It's the last thing they ask you. Then when you get hired as an officer, you go to Kiganjo. You're told for those nine months or six to nine months, Ryan Yadui, Ryan Yadui, Ryan Yadui, and that's why when a crime happens, a police officer commits a crime, they close ranks and protect themselves because they see the civilian as an enemy. They don't see as a friend. Bonifaz, are you sure this is what they are told in Kikaji? Yes, Ryan, uh, yeah, Ryan Yadui, Ryan Yadui. And then they, you have to uncivilian you. The po when you get to Kiganjo, you must have been well, a civilian. To remove the civilian From you. you. I, I've heard it being explained before even by senior military officers. Yes. It is so that you can now become, you can understand following order following and structure. Orders. No matter how bad and wrong the order is. And guess what? Yes. You get, after that training... You are taken to Central Police or Kamkunji, whatever it is, that was built by the colonial government 100 years ago. The stench of urine and human remains and human waste and sweat is over 100 years old. You work in a very undignified place. Then they house you for in a room. You have no dignity. You have no humanity in you. Not because you don't become human. It's because the entire system is designed to oppress you. That's the reason why a very poor police officer we not inv investigate a rich man who is stealing from him because he's afraid of that rich man because your dignity is gone. Most officers have no self-dignity or even self-worth. That's the reason why okay, if when you talk to an officer and they deem you rude, they can shoot you or arrest you or just beat you because they have no self-worth. If you sit here now right now and you insult, all of you insult me, I'll walk out and go home. But if you insult an, an officer, you might even commit a crime on you because the entire environment is designed to demoralize, to dehumanize, and make you civilians the enemy. Do you agree with City that the police are victims? 100 percent they are victims and they need they need a union. Mm. Kenya police need a union. So the police are not stupid. The, like uh, you call them. Foolishness they have. But they, there is a bit of humanity left. A bit. Because some of the things police officers do in this country are very, very wrong. Like even the way they beat up people without any reason. Mm -hmm. And they say to Nafota Amri. Like the office for Central Mutai refusing to release protesters. And then we said, here are sanitary pads for the women who are in the cell. Says, no, 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 no. I want to teach them a lesson. What lesson are you teaching someone by not giving them a sanitary pad? Mm. There's no lesson there. You know, one of the things, and you rightly, you rightly put it, the, there was a police service in South Africa that was actually a police force who when you read writers of that time when they're describing the police force there's one gentleman called alex laguma in the fog of the season's end they he describes the recruitment of a police officer it wasn't the most humorous thing humorous when you read it but it's really not humorous he says they looked for somebody who was not capable of i'm paraphrasing of passing any written exam okay mm -hmm. they looked for someone whose entire ecosystem was white people specifically the africans and whose contact with black people had been minimal and it was it was people who worked for them yeah. and obeyed orders this is in the appetite system yeah so he said now when such a person is made a police officer there is nothing in his experience that 
makes him even understand how a black man thinks or goes about his life. So whatever instructions they are given, they will follow to the letter. Yeah. Without even questioning it. Even when it is clear, it doesn't make sense. You have a pass that leaves, they, 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 they are called homelands, that, that you come from to come into town to work. Mm. It allows you to work for a certain period of time and then go back home. By the way, if you look at some of the towns in South Africa, especially the Western Cape, there are places where you'll find a railway line. That railway line serves to bring workers into the town and back. That's what it does. The conveyor belt. Primarily, they don't live in Back to the village. Town. Mm. Yes. Back to whatever settlement that was meant for the Africans. That hasn't changed. It that's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. That you see, those railway lines were not dismantled. Okay. Mm. All that happened was that black people now took certain positions, mm. but the black people who traveled to go and do that work, you think they stopped traveling to go and work in those places? No. Precisely. Now, when we look at our country, mm. the background is not dissimilar. It's just that our apartheid wasn't given time to take root. But the thinking was not very, very different. Now, when you say you are an activist, yes, how do you activate this process to the point where you actually get to help the very citizens of this country mm. understand that the problem is in their thinking and in the way they perceive how things should be done and how they should go about things? Because that thinking is what leads us to elect the people we elect. Mm -hmm. It's what leads us to tolerate the things we tolerate. Mm -hmm. And in so tolerating, essentially we are saying you can get away with anything you want. Wow. Okay. So, so ignorance is a big thing in this country mm. because we don't know we do foolish things. Uh, but I think one of the things Kenya's wanted to say a lot is hunger is the enemy. Mm. And uh, someone who is angry, if you can satisfy their hunger for a day, they will sell their vote. So no matter how much civic education you do as long as you don't check the fundamentals then things will always go wrong i think uh when our mother spoke about uh, cost of living and price of food as long as people are hungry they're going to do desperate things they live and elect the oppressors because they're saying what you cool leo tomorrow sort itself out mm -hmm. in the same zone that we say a child comes with their own plate what mm. so so there's this uh, this notion that we we right now to trying to do what what we're saying right now in a way is actually victim shaming mm. because the citizens are actually victims and their victims are in ignorance and hunger and when you when you are hungry and someone gives you food you'll sell your vote and when you're ignorant and shakahola comes and says if you you're still hungry but you know if you die you're going to go to heaven you're mm -hmm. gonna go and fast yourself to death so the, it's a big bigger complex problem. I'll give you an example. I, when I was coming here to use Southern Bypass, so there are a lot of people standing outside there on Omba Lift. What mm. sana? Mm. They all go to industry area. That girl worked for 30, 40 years for, uh, for an industrial company here. He has no NHIF, no medical cover. When he returns, he's going to get a bicycle or a radio or a torch. And then he goes back home. Who has filled that man? It's a Tuoli who is supposed to fight for the workers. So at the end of the day, the leadership has failed because we cannot develop if our leaders are not developed. The, the, our level of ignorance and poverty is a directly, has a direct connection with the, the people that we elect. So, if the, our leaders don't see development as a, as a priority or fighting poverty as a priority, they're going to give us such things like housing, mm. things that we don't need. But what we need right now is food on our table and safer roads. I've seen the headline streets about people dying on the road accidents. A citizen cannot build their own roads. They cannot enforce traffic rules. They cannot inspect vehicles. It's leadership. So let's, let's say the problem we have in this country is a leadership problem, not a people problem. Because if the leaders are not corrupt, you shall not be corrupt. Because I know my leader is not corrupt. If mm. you are not corrupt as a man in your home, your kids won't be corrupt because their kids reflect who you are. So Just take a break. 
<laughs> well timed. <laughs> 32, 28 minutes to 10. Boniface Mwangi, the birthday boy, is our guest in the show this morning. We're talking about the place of police in demonstrations and also the place of civic activists, active citizens such as himself in making sure that we get what we deserve as a people and as a country. Colgate reminds you if you go to Naivas today or tomorrow and by Colgate, you will be doing a big thing. Have you heard about that big thing that they're doing? Like the big smell you have? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. That one. So what they say is uh, let all children in the country smile. You see, look at that image behind you. Yeah, see that? Yeah. See those kids smiling? What are they doing? They're, they're fetching water. They're fetching water. water. Fetching water from a water well, that's a water well that's been provided by Colgate. So they want to do 30 wells to benefit some 150,000 people in such communities, a community around a school. So once these kids in a school have access to water, it means that their sanitation is Clean. ensured. Mm -hmm. It means also that they do not have to waste time instead of being in class being sent by the school head go to the river to fetch water so we can pour in the classroom because the classroom does not have uh, the kind of flooring that it has it's dust all those things are eliminated plus their folks can come to the school and fetch water and they only get never shine kuru teeth imagine <laughs> they don't get that right so just walk into naivas today buy colgate and help spread the smiles this is the situation room the only way to start your day. It's that time again when we get to gather around and marvel at the great engineering, raw power, finesse, and share in our round motor love for motoring at the annual Digger Motor Show 2023. From car lovers, bike enthusiasts, spare part dealers, insurance, as well as asset financers and more, this year's Digger Motor Show will be one for the books. We're talking a whole four-day event from Thursday 20th to Sunday 23rd at KICC Grounds, Nairobi, where we will have something for everyone, so you better not miss out. Get the family, bring your friends, and share in the joys that will give you lasting memories and an experience you're bound to not forget. For more information or participation, contact Caroline on 723 or email senyandiaka at standardmedia.co.ke Digger Motor Show 2023 is brought to you by Standard Group and Digger Motors and is powered by Spice FM Take the money Who's gonna know? Paint won't rest until he finds you You could run and go far away Think about your role in the church No one will know It'll It's sunny and temperatures rising. 18 in Nairobi, highs of 24 and lows of 11. It's sunny at 18 in Nakuru, highs of 26. And we'll see highs of 24 in a sunny Nyeri at 17. It's 17 and sunny in Eldoret, highs of 23 and lows of 12. And at 26, Mombasa is sunny, highs of 29. 29 will be the high in Malindi, where it's sunny at 27. And it's 23 and sunny in Kisumu, going to highs of 28. Mal Kakamega will see highs of 28, where it's currently sunny at 22. 22 and sunny in Kampala, highs of 28. 31 will be the high in a mostly sunny Dar es Salaam. It's getting warmer. It's now one degree in Johannesburg, highs of nine and lows of zero. And at 25, Lagos is sunny. It's partly sunny at 22 in Kinshasa. We'll go to highs of 31. On Monday afternoon, it's sunny at 38 in Beijing, highs of 39, and mostly sunny at 20 in Paris, going to highs of 30. London will see highs of 23, where it's sunny at 18, and at 23, it's mostly cloudy in New York, Sunday night. Coming into Monday, highs of 29 and lows of 19. Engine revs. Will you be ready to get all that petrol head enthusiasm at this year's annual Digger Motor Show? Well, you better belt up and make your way to KICC from the 20th to the 23rd of July 2023 for a wholesome four day event. Come and join car lovers, bike enthusiasts, spare part dealers, insurance, as well as asset financers, and more for what will be an unforgettable experience by far. We are going all out to make it a great show for you and the whole family with something for everyone. So 
so you better not miss out. For more information or participation, contact Caroline on 0723803601 or email sinyandiaka at standardmedia.co.ke. Digger Motor Show 2023 is brought to you by Standard Group and Digger Motors and is powered by Spice FM. All right, I don't think we have a traffic problem moving on out uh, into Monday. It's more or less gone on Kambu Road and the Thicker Super Highway just dealing with the little last bits of it. You'll be fine getting into the city from Westlands and also coming off of Mombasa Road. A little bit of traffic on Huru Highway as you get towards Haile Selassie. Um, but apart from that, I think traffic hour, safe to say, is over this Monday morning. Through the day, they'll talk to us on Spice FM, KE on Twitter. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. just said a druid thing like that so forget about it <laughs> forget about it we can do without it boniface Mwangi is our guest he's here in the studio city you had asked him about the power of citizen activists like himself active citizens like yes, himself yes in persuading the rest of us to understand the power within us yes you know the reason why i ask this huh, uh, is because the way boniface described our leaders and ourselves who are not in political leadership there is no difference if we are poor so are they if there's a poverty of spirit they also have it because how do you explain this great need for someone to accumulate wealth without even thinking of the consequences if not a poverty that they have of, of one nature or the other mm. if you've ever been to a function where there is a buffet, otherwise known as Buffett. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you observe carefully and look at the way people sell food, there are people who will pile food on their plate to the point where now you need to do a balancing act as you're going to sit yeah. down. Okay? And you want to put almost everything in it. Then there are people who will take a bit of this, a bit of this, sit, go back. Because they've been informed you can go back as often as you like. They may end up even eating more food than the person who piled it. But they have knowledge that this and it's lived experience. This food isn't going to get finished. You can mm. continue going back. Mm. You pile because you're not sure that that food will be there when you go back. So you want to make sure you have as much as you can possibly eat. Even if you don't finish it, but you've piled it. Mm. Now, why am I giving this analogy? It doesn't matter if someone is in a position of leadership. If the fundamentals are exactly what they were at the time they got elected and why it is they even appealed to the electorate it means the electorate found some commonality somebody they could resonate with somebody they could f find a level playing field with and they hope that when this person gets that position of authority they will then understanding the problem where they came from this person would address those issues but Coming from that same background, this fellow doesn't want to address those issues. And if they do, that's not a priority. The priority is to be like the other people he looked up to. And in doing so, you lose out on the very thing that got you elected in the first place. My question was, how do you get people to understand mm -hmm. this? It's called accountability. We've discussed it on many occasions here. How do we teach people to hold leaders accountable? To make sure that they're actually accountable. That when you're elected... It's not a free ride you've been given. <laughs> you, are, you actually go there to perform tasks that we've asked you to go and perform. So, I see it differently. Um, we have a Stockholm Syndrome where we fall in love with our kidnappers and our oppressors. And then over time, they make us become them. So our leaders have very chokora behavior. <laughs> you send our leaders to a buffet, they'll put food on the plate and in their pockets and in their socks. <laughs> <laughs> they do that. <laughs> they will steal money meant to build a hospital. They will steal the beds, the bed sheets, the medication, and if possible, marry the nurses. Mm. And so you have, you have a hospital with nothing. That's what they do. Um, you know, when there was slavery, uh, freed slaves would go get some money and go buy slaves and become slave owners. Mm -hmm. And so our leaders have become slave owners. And then when we overthrow those leaders, we become slave owners ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, how do we uh, deal with that? There's a need for citizens to understand that an election is actually an event. It happens, then it, that's, it's done. Mm. Now, 
the work of a voter and a citizen of a Dalston mind is to hold their government accountable. If I was a UDA supporter, which I'm not, I would be in the opposition today. Because the moment you elect a government, all of you join opposition, so that you can join forces to hold the government accountable, which means that even the, the government knows the people who elected us have expectations. The problem is, voters have no expectations. They know what Aiba to, what Atutukana to, what Afanya to. If, if Ruto cared about the consequence of the citizens, he wouldn't have passed the housing fund bill or the finance bill as it was. He would have known there would be consequences for my, his backyard. But his backyard says, ah, tumpatia muda, tumpatia muda. The moment a government is elected, the next day, citizens become one thing, the government becomes another thing. The citizens join hands to hold the government accountable. That means they're going to work for you. But if you do not work together, then you're going to lose. And the leaders know that these divisions between Azimio and UDA benefits the leaders, not the citizens. Because if the citizens unite, we could even make our agenda Rayla's agenda. Because right now, Rayla's agenda is his, then a part of the citizens' agenda. But if you are joined forces as citizens, say these are what we want as citizens, mm. Rayla would be a very good opposition leader because he knows very well the citizens demand <laughs> this is what I This is what you want. Yeah. Why do why do you think citizens do not actually come together and uh, and then become active in this manner? Why why do you think it is that people will say, okay, well, we voted. If something happened, okay, sorry. If it happens that somebody stole the vote, all right. Well, I got to get up on the grind tomorrow. Why do you think there's that? You know, there's a bit of tribalism in it. Mm. A bit. Yeah. When you when you when you hear. Rela Lua supporters, uh, Ruto Kalenjin supporters. So people say a Kalenjin should not go against the president, or a Lua should not go against against Raila. That's mm. a problem right there. Boni, they, Boni, that's, on a, that, that's on a bit of trouble. It's, it's a big. That's a great deal of it. <laughs> so in, instead of issues bringing us together, uh, tribe brings us together. So we unite on tribal formations mm. Mm. and makes it easier for the president to actually go to his backyard and say, you know, those guys are attacking me. And makes it easier for Rayla to go and attack uh, the president from either Kibra or wherever he thinks is a stronghold. And I was hoping that this last election, was an, it was an issue-based election mostly. Hustler versus dynasty, that was economy, the narrative. Blah, blah. Economy versus this. Right now, we should actually be uniting around issues, not personalities. Mm. And I think one of the uh, ways this country can progress is that Rayla Odinga and Ruto should actually push the country, country to a level where it's all about issues. If this tribal support that our leaders have were miraculously able to hold them accountable, would that tribal support be deemed as negative? Uh, in a way, yes. Why? Uh, because that means that anyone can vie anywhere. Yes. Because you're not vying because of tribe, you're vying because of issues. So it, it elevates our discussion to issues. Right now, J Jalango is in trouble in Kibra. Because he said, well, you have nothing, you're just a comedian. Where you go to your hotel, like you have to go to your hotel. Then someone will talk about when you have to go to your state house. You know, that, that is the problem now. It's like you're betraying the people who voted for you. Mm. And it, it, it's also a sign that we have no value-based politics. Because values mean that I can't betray someone that I was loyal to yesterday. That it means that you cannot see me, Bonfast Mwangi, then in state house with mm. the president because we don't share values. But you can see me then in the because we share values. Mm. That's what that's what ideological or value-based politics mean. And you're saying that it's something we have a drought. We have a drought because people are crossing over. I was I was asking uh, Honorable Mother Karua. I said, how come you guys have been betrayed every day by people that were in the t same team yesterday? You know, like that. Mm. I wouldn't if I, if I, if we were my friend and we fell out. I only go online and attack you and say, oh, CT, CT, in Danyamaza, Nitulia, Nipike Moshenana Bibiangu, like in Danyamaza. The guys who were campaigning with Rela Odinga yesterday are the same guys who have been bought and going against him the next day. I'm like, how, how? do you do that? But does that not tell you then perhaps that these individuals were opportunists even then? Because if they came from Raela's political backyard, so to speak. And across the world. They knew very well that the chance of being elected if they did not support Raila was next to zero. So that's what they did. And they supported and they got in. And now you're seeing them in their true colors. But, but, but you know you don't have to support the president to bring development to your backyard. It's a lie. Um, the other thing, uh, during the one-party state, Kwegi Amwere, Orengo, Chalagat, the all Kanu MPs. But they're opposing Moi in Kanu. 
so that means you can actually love or hate the president whichever part you're in um this loyal blind support is very bad for this country because that means you have no opposition the president has a rubber stamp in parliament i think beyond betraying Raila Odinga, which is not it is not important i think they're betraying the kenyan people because they're saying this country needs a strong opposition mm. you need people in parliament to speak when motions come you need people to defend the people. But now when everyone joins UDA, then it means we have no one to speak for on our behalf. But you know, you're onto something there because I see the greater danger is on the, the narrative that is being, is taking root. That it is okay not to have a stand. It is okay not to have a position. It is okay for you to be as whimsical as you like and to give the impression that you support a certain way of doing things and mm. yet what you're actually doing is self-interest essentially you are giving it rubber stamp and saying it is okay yes but then you see how we justify we say that's our politics but then the question is must it be that way no it shouldn't be politics of betrayal i think people should stand on their values if you believed you know one of the things i watch clips online about mm. people what they were saying yesterday about ruto and then what they're saying today about Ruto. And I'm like, Ruto, don't you see these guys are there for your money? He knows. And the poor you have. Oh, he knows. Yeah, uh, he of must know. Because he must know. <laughs> All of these people he know. Must know. Yeah. Even those that have not crossed over from Azimio to start openly supporting uh, Kenya Kwanza, they're not in it because they believe the cause. Mm. They have, I don't think they even know what the cause is. All right? And that's why if you look at. at we, we focus so much on the president and the presidency and we tend to forget these other 345 individuals who are in parliament who are supposed to be doing the job of reminding the president that you're now in office and these are the promises that you made to the kenyan people yes and the majority of the kenyan people then voted for you and you are now in office all yeah. right all of them those in kenya kwanza speak as if they are in parliament to execute what the will of the president the mm -hmm. will of the president is mm -hmm. and they talk come and explain no 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 what we are doing what we are doing those on the other side are just basically like saying no because Raila said no yesterday now we say no He's saying no yeah right? should he say yes today they They'll say yes move on and, and say yes. if we focused on that lot yes that lot in the national assembly and in the senate then the guy one that one guy in state house can fall in line Mm, that's as true. long as we are focusing our, my, our, our, all our attention on that one guy, then that one guy becomes the most important and everybody, each of these are 345, feel, all right, for me to be noticed, I better align with that one guy because that's the one guy who everybody is looking at. So, because the government has a lot of money, one of the ways they buy people, because I have a friend of mine who was bought uh, with a lot of money. <laughs> oh, okay. How much? <laughs> About 100 million. Nice. Uh, but he was, uh, like, he was given a tender. He was uh -huh. told, you're going to earn... 50 million, in the, 50 million in the next five years, allowances, minus, minus, minus. Mm. I'm going to give you a tender that you can take 50 million in one day. Chop, chop. Then you continue just doing this thing. So there's even a member of parliament, I was at ESC last week, uh, having a meeting with them. And they're very concerned about the current parliament. There's a motion in parliament, someone has proposed a motion to reduce procurement crimes. Yes. Yep. That gentleman is called Peter Kaluma. Uh, no, Kaluma is doing one for no, integrity. Ro Ro if you're convicted. Is, uh, Ruko. Ruko. Oh, it's, it's a Ruko one. Yeah, yeah that Very one is in procurement. Kaluma is saying if you're convicted like Sonko or Itito, you can still vote for public office. Mm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. even ESCC is concerned internally that the next coming month is going to be very bad because it says where the money is is in tendering committees. And governors want control of that committee. So do ministries want that. And members of parliament are beneficiaries. So they're sponsoring a, a motion in parliament to, pro to remove procurement crimes. So he's saying actually even our hands are tied. And I think it speaks of the president. Because he hasn't declared his position on this, in this matter. He has the numbers in parliament. So does he want to become the sol solo and the Again, of the entire country? Boniface. Forget the president. These 345 men and women yes. who are going to debate this bill from first reading, going into committee stage, second reading, into the third reading where they now make the decision. Yes. What is their stand? It should not matter what William Ruto thinks about it. 
No, he does. He has, he has the majority in parliament. Ah, no, that, that's the that point, majority Bobby. he does it not shouldn't. have. He shouldn't have the majority. Mm. Yes. Because people should be independent. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. They are members of parliament. Yes. They should be voting on it because it's right mm. or because it's, it's wrong. wrong. Yes. Because it's their job to keep to hold the government accountable. On behalf of this one is not even about the what, what the government is. this but, one is about just accountability and fighting corruption and all those things. If they have a spine, then they would stand up and say, All right, Roko, I personally have absolutely no problem with Roko proposing that bill. He has a right to do that. He yes. is a member of parliament. Yes, he has a right bring to bring up so. that debate. Let's have the debate. But going by precedence, mm. the members of parliament put self interest before country. Of course. That's the problem. Yes. Actually, I don't know why we keep referring to parliament and we remove ourselves from that particular equation. Mm. We are tied to the hips. With them? Yes. Remember what Martha, uh, Martha Karua said. If returning officers and those involved in the electoral process understood that there'd be an audit yes. and an opening of service after the election, they would be less susceptible to being influenced. Mm. If members of parliament knew for sure that all the actions, all everything that they participate in will come on their doorstep, not in five years' time, mm. within the course of a year, the same thing that we see happening with the governors. But remember, they make our laws. So they have made sure that any law that would jeopardize their position has been decently watered down. So it becomes not impossible, but just extremely difficult. It seems like a zero-sum game, always talking about the participation of the citizenry. Mm. But unfortunately, it's at the heart of it because that citizenry suffer in silence, yep. elect again, and then suffer more in more, in, in more silence. And yet, they want to then point the finger at the president who is doing what any politician does. Just like now, you know, Bonnie, you are on to something. When you led a demonstration, how many years ago was it? Seven, eight with the pigs. With the pigs. 13, right? Yeah, ten years ago. In ten years ago. You are onto something because you're saying that this is the house that should ensure that this country is run properly. Yes. That's the reason we have a parliament. Right? True. Focus should be on that. Focus should be on what exactly are they doing? Well, how do they debate? When Raila goes home and says, you know, there are some people who have betrayed us, da -da 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 -da, and this and the other. All right, so those people should actually answer and say why was i absent from the house yeah i was in the house so what did i do i'm a member of the budget committee how did i contribute to this budget yeah. i'm a member of the finance committee what was my contribution in the finance committee by the time the finance bill is coming to the house yeah. members of odm and as and uh, wiper and jubilee were in that committee uh, have you have you heard about how parliamentarians are bribed in the toilet it's it's yes, public yes. knowledge. You yeah, know, it's public knowledge now. Yeah. You know the thing is, yeah. that conversation about they are being bribed is a conversation about the we talk about them being compromised. They are not compromised. They are waiting to be compromised. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like they, they it isn't too much effort. Mm -mm. It, it's it's a question of you walikubali. Uh, it's you, you get even even there. A, you can even pay a member of parliament to ask a question again, uh, about your competitor or discredit someone. Mm. I'll, I'll say this. Um, so parliament is rotten. Mm. There's some that I made a series of, has been talking about online. Mm. Corruption in the judiciary. Mm. The, the member of parliament knows I can get involved in corruption. I'll get a corrupt lawyer to represent me. They'll go bribe the magistrate and the DPP and the investigation officer. It's actually very messed up because somebody say, you know what? Let them pass bad laws or let them steal. They'll be, they'll be, uh, they'll be found guilty by the court. Yeah. Uh, ESC last week they said Waluke, the Waluke conviction mm -hmm. bothers them a lot because mm. they prove this man stole money yep. yes. but he's a member of parliament Yes, he's still looking around here scot free yep. so at the end of the day um, it's sad that even this is going to end in a sad note that as a country you look like you're doomed in a way actually no you know there's something that happened in Holland recently eh? Some, the government actually collapsed Mm -hmm. And that government had coalitions, mm -hmm. just like this one of ours has, okay? Now, the thing that made it collapse is a very strange one, okay? The leader of the opposition, the, the, the prime minister, the president, wanted to cap the number of relatives that refugees who were already in the country could bring into the country. Mm -hmm. Say, no, it can be two, three, cap it. Mm. His coalition partners did not agree with him. Mm. They worked out. The government collapsed. 
You see, when Eric says the power is in the members of parliament, it is. These ones cannot collapse because this one have a price. And and then they have the, the, there's a dose here. Let me tell you, one of the things that make people turn around, mm. you don't have to be corrupt. Mm. But maybe you have uh, Kenya is a very moralistic country. Mm. You have, have very. Uh, I would the, say we are a hypocritical uh, country. Uh, hypocritical this, morality. Yes. Some yes. people are very decadent lifestyles. Uh -huh. So maybe there's a way you have fetishes and all that. NIS National Intelligence Service has a file on you. Yeah. So when you're about to vote on a bill, yeah. <laughs> they push a file and say, "Does your wife know? Yeah. You Does do your pastor to? know?" <laughs> so there's a lot of blackmail actually. <laughs> they, they, they let me tell you, <laughs> they robbie blackmail is galore. So members of parliament, may, the guy must be like a very good SDA elder. Yeah. But at night, the things he does, and NIS knows, and the police know. So they say the president wants you to vote on this particular way. Oh, I'm aware we go kwashida. And I won't say new <laughs> quality. That's what we know these things. Mm. I won't say something about Ruto that he has done right. One thing, mm. I was in Malindi last month mm. and in Mombasa, and the number of disappearances have reduced. Mm -hmm. The number of extrajudicial killings have reduced. Uh, today, we used to have like, lose one or two young men in Madare every day. The number of killings have reduced. Mm. Police are now investigating, arresting, taking to court or they arrest you, they interrogate you, or they release you. And mm. it's a very good thing that he promised to reduce extrajudicial killings. He has done that. He disbanded killer's codes. Mm -hmm. I hope he does not bring them back are again. Are you sure mm. they were disbanded? Or they, they, they just renamed? The ones we knew. The ones we knew were okay. disbanded. There's, right. a, there's, a, there's a special crimes prevention unit. There's, mm. a, there's a squad that when you have a gun, you it, need to you need, you, it will have to happen. You'll have, mm. you'll have to die. But the idea of guys getting picked at night being kidnapped being tortured in, in containers that has ended mm. and hope it doesn't come back and that i commend the president i'm very actually very happy about it because mm. the the number of complaints and cries have reduced in the country mm. let the law take its own course let things be done the right way the right mm. way legally way. But, by the constitution only face the people's watchman the active citizen the everything that you are keep doing what you're doing thank okay? you and in 2027, go back to the ballot. <laughs> <laughs> this country, uh, a day is a long period of time. Can yeah. you imagine what five years is? Wow. Yeah. Yes. That's a can you imagine a tender worth 100 million shillings yeah. in a day? And the only way you get it is by becoming a member of parliament. Well, oh, can't do up. Can't do up. Can't do up. Boniface uh, Mwangi has been our guest. Thank you very much for tuning in to Kenya's biggest conversation today. Join us again tomorrow. We'll have more and more conversations. Uh, keep coming. And do say goodbye. Goodbye. And? God bless. And? Um, happy birthday to Happy me. birthday once again, Boni. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Thank> indeed. <laughs> Remember to look out for Faithless. The second episode comes out on Thursday. And if you haven't watched the first episode, then you still have today, tomorrow, mm, Wednesday. Wednesday. Just go to showmax.com. Have a lovely one. It's 10 a.m. Spice up your life.